Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Quip. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and more enjoyable. I'll tell you why I love Quip, okay? It gets to every tooth. It's, it's tremendous. It's a built-in two-minute timer pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, helping you guide a full and even clean. So why I love Quip? That's why I love Quip. And that's why they've backed over 20,000 dental professionals. That's why it's they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash Joey right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free. Free with Quip Electric Toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash Joey. Again, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Joey. Love, I love Quip. I'll tell you this, you're going to love them too. Number two, the church is brought to you by my bookie. Bitches, it's mid-season. This is it. You got baseball playoffs today. You got college football. You got pro football. You got hoops starting in a couple fucking weeks. This is the money-making part of the year. And my bookie's there for you. Why? You play, you win, you get motherfucking paid. You understand me? Listen, you've been on the sidelines for too long. It's time to get in the game. Why have the fucking winner if you can't fucking depend on who you're fucking betting with? That's when my bookie comes in. Log into my bookie right now and double your money. You're like, Joey, what are you talking about? Double the Gitas right now. Use promo code CHURCH and you'll get your first deposit matched at 100%. That's promo code CHURCH. You play, you win, you get paid. My bookie. Take that fucking mule lead. It's I was, my favorite. Okay, I was telling you that. I still remember when this song was on the radio. When? This is uh, November of 83. I like that you played. I don't think I've ever been here when you've played a, a girl, a female vocalist. Oh, I love all that shit. I know. I love all this stuff. I like this song. And I still remember getting in a car. It was cold. I had just come from Sarasota, Florida. I've been hiding from the cops. And I'm in this car. And I got a job at a factory painting shells and putting boxes together. Because Entenmann's, when you go into a supermarket, yeah. Entenmann's has a shelf. Those Entenmann shelves, yeah. I would spray paint them with, no a, with a gun, and then we'd pa- put them in shelves, and you'd have to build them at the store. So I got a job. If I stayed there for 30 days, I'd become a union. It was my first shot of being a human being again. How old were you? I was 19. Oh, wow. And Fernie, my buddy, had a, his father had the H&B diner around the corner. It was right in Edgewater, right downtown Edgewater, where they shot uh, Copland. H&B Diner was the heart of the city. Like, people were, it was packed every day. I don't think I knew you lived in Florida. No, this ain't fucking Florida. This oh, is New Jersey. Oh, I thought you said Sarasota. I was in Sarasota hiding out from the cops. Oh. I come back when, the, when I found out the cops weren't looking for me no more, and I moved in with my buddy Fernie. I love that you hid in Sarasota, yeah, by the way. I, that's the only, I had a friend that was in Sarasota. Yeah. His name was G. Hartman. Not like Alaska or Mexico, just Florida. Well, at that time, everybody from Jersey only goes to Florida. Right. If you know anything about Jersey, they go to Atlantic City. It's the big time of the year when they break up the white shoes. <laughs> and then the other side, they go to fucking Florida. That's everybody it. from Jersey goes to Florida. That's it. That's it. Nothing west of the Mississippi. So I had a friend <laughs> that his father worked for NASA. And they lived in Florida. They moved to Florida when he was a sophomore. And he came back my senior year all fucking jumped up like fucking Tan, young. yeah. Tan. And he's Jack. Like, if you ever want to come down, I'm down there dying in loneliness, man. He would have taken anybody. Really? And I remember going, I remember the cops were looking for me on a Sunday night. And I remember going, fuck. I called him up. I had his number. And I go, Gary, I'm coming down tomorrow. I didn't tell him the cops were looking for me or anything. No, you don't I usually like, leave with that. Coming in, I'll pick you up. He was so fucking excited just to have somebody. He was so lonely just to have somebody that knew what he was about. Yeah. And, you know, how crazy he was and shit. How much time of your life would you say you spent hiding from the law? Hiding from the law and from people altogether. 
maybe three years wow. like if you combine everything that's amazing so those are those first two months but i always had something bad going on kate like there was always something in the pipe like you, criminal or just personal <coughs> personal I, I always had something in the pipe i was working on mm. kate came over here with a bag of coke and she made me drop her off in front of the dealer's house. So now I knew that there was a dealer in that house. Right. So I would walk over there one night, and then I'd find out what his name was. So I always had something working. I always had somebody looking for me. Yeah, you always had a plan. You know, if, if, I, if I got to the point in my life that if I wasn't in trouble, I wasn't happy. Huh. Like, I lived in a place if that if I wasn't in trouble, I wasn't happy. I had to go to sleep every night scared for me to go to sleep. From the pain I was going through with my mother and having no family, I got to a point that I didn't care about life, and I would just beat people. I've been there. I've like, been yeah, there. Like, like just, where you, just you give up. You don't. Or you just almost like when you're in pain, you want to do reckless shit reckless because shit, yeah. somehow like the more reckless you well, are. the world was mean to you, so now you're going to be mean back to the world. Yeah. The world was a scumbag to you, and this is the first time you've that the world has been a scumbag to you. So your immediate reaction, or my reaction as a young man, was to lash out against the world, Me too. regardless of who I hurt. And I kept mm. a circle of people that I didn't try to involve them, but they would always get involved because they would always hear about it. So if everybody knew Kate was my goomba, every time I did something, Kate would have to hear about it. Yeah, of course. Your fucking buddy is up to it again. Yeah. And you're like, listen, his mother died. You know, give him a breather. Fuck that. He robbed my friend's house, and now he's out there doing coke, and he told him to go fuck himself. And, you know, so my friends are always getting the blunt of that. And that's why today I'm really good to those people. Because oh, yeah. Because all those times I would disappear, they'd be in the bar, and they'd take the blunt of it. Damn. Some people would come and go, where's Coco? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, he robbed my house last night. And we know it's him, and fucking, we're gonna fuck him up. And my friends would giggle. What would your? They would. They would. They, they would like, love it. They would love it. That's insane. I'd be scared. They but, would love it. No way. Just two, three days ago. Sometimes, like I said, I go to a coffee shop to write. Yeah. And I end up writing something else as an exercise. Yeah, you told me you just write. You don't even think about it. You and just the other write. Day I wrote a story that was really funny to me. I met this cat when I was a freshman in high school. I really don't want to say his name. You know, I'm not friends with him. I haven't spoken to him in 30 years. But I met this cat, and he was a rich kid. His father was a mobster, left his mother for a younger girl, typical shit. Yeah. And his father just placated it by throwing money at him. And, you know, he had a Z28. He always had new cars. He always had new stereos. His mother got fucking fat and ugly. And his, he had his uh, aunt that was a half a momo. She had had, like, her nervous breakdown and she couldn't go to work or some shit. A Momo? Yeah, like, she just sat in the kitchen and watched game shows all day with Got drink it. fucking tea. <laughs> so I became friends with him through other friends. And one of the guys that adopted me, Mike Runny, lit him up on one night. One night he tried to be a tough guy with Mike, and that's the wrong guy to be a tough guy with. And Mike lit him up at the park on 51st Street Park, bl bl bloodied his face. No. There was, he broke his nose. Yeah, there was blood everywhere. So... He always knew I was Mike's goomba, so he was always kind of standoffish with me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Every time I'd see him, he'd say hello. And he was courteous, but he knew I was Mike's brother. And you can't tell me a story about Mike. Of like, course. You, you can't come to me yeah. and tell me anything about Mike because I'll smack you. I have friends like that. So me and him became kind of friends, and we would take rides. And they were all, all scared to go into the city. They were reefer heads. So I would say, I'll take you to the spot. My fee was a bag. To drive them? They would drive. Oh. And I would get out of the car, walk into the spot, get the reef, and then get back in the car and give it to them. Little did they know I would take a butt out of their bag. Of I was, course. I was working them to death. Yeah. And I knew the guys in the bodega. They would take care of me, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I, I kind of liked them, but he still wasn't one of my favorites. And one night when I was like a junior or the beginning of my senior year, I saw him out one night, and he goes, get in the car. You want to take a ride with us? And we're, we're smoking pot and listening to loud music, going around North Bergen, where I live. And he had a crush on this girl. And the girls were hanging out in front of this park. And it was four of us. And 
he got out of the car and started talking to the girl. Well, guess what? The girl had a boyfriend that was a fucking gorilla. He rolled up with one of his buddies and without provocation just started beating up on my buddy. No. Just, I just opened up. So all us three get out of the car and I'm trying to de-escalate the situation. How? By just breaking them apart. The guy he was, they, they called him Rocky. Like his father owned a diner in Fairview, New Jersey or some shit. And the guy was a big kid. He was roided up. He fucking pummeled Perry. That was the kid's name. So we all got back in the Z28. He dropped us off. And about a week later, somebody said to your dog, you know, he's mad at you. Because he said you didn't have his back. And I go, what are you talking about? It was four against two. We would have killed those guys. There was no reason to escalate the situation. Yeah. They would have just come back with 20 guys and then our whole town's at war. Yeah. Let's just break it up. Get Everybody out Everybody take that punches. And that's what I told him. He goes, well, he took it like whatever. So I confronted him about it. He goes, well, I, I wanted to fight him. I go, Perry, he was knocking the fuck out of here. You weren't going nowhere out here. There was nowhere to go. So over the years, him and I had had this thing. We were cool because we had mutual friends. So we, right. had, we ended up in different, in different places. I leave. I go to Colorado. I never think about him. I move on with my life. I go back to New Jersey in 84. Everybody's a drug dealer. Everybody's in the mafia. Everybody's selling coke. Everybody. That's insane. It's like leaving right now and coming back. And we, when I come back, Lee and you are big time we, coke dealers. And I'm like, you know, he <laughs> Why? never did coke. It's so weird, though. Like, how come no that's, one just that's, got a... That's how cocaine spread in the early 80s. It was that fast. Damn. 83 to 85, it spread like a fucking wildfire. When you watch the 7-5 or the, the other documentary, they're not lying. It took over, like, it, where, where they were selling, you would be coming here for years to this corner to buy weed. And one day you showed up and they're like, they ain't got no more, we ain't selling weed no more. This is straight up rocking this motherfucker. And you're like, like that's, that's how quick it had taken over. Huh. Man. So when I moved back, I bumped into him one day and he's like, I got this Coke, nobody else has this connection. He gave me two blasts, Kate. He was out of this fucking world. What did you like the first time I tried Coke? I, I was already feel... doing it. I was like, oh, I, you I started doing... at 16, but that's insane. Now I'm 21, 22, 21, and I moved back to North Bergen for some stupid reason. And I bump into him, and he's telling me that he's selling Coke. His father owned the construction company, so he worked construction. He was always a big shot in construction, but he was a degenerate gambler. So that to, to placate this chick, he had stolen that chick from that dude. No. But she was like a high money chick. You had, uh, you had to lift a rock if you wanted that pussy. That's why she was dating the dude who was father on the deli. She was one of those girls. She was pretty, on the deli. Yeah, she that's was, the high money. Yeah, that's where the money is. She Hold ain't going to date no stiff. So he had to come up with Gitas to date this girl, you know, and he had the construction job. He gambled. And then he told me when they got into the Coke business. So I'm, I, he says to me, if you could sway some customers in my way. I'll take care of you from time to time. So I started helping him out. It was easy in those days. Everybody was looking for Coke. Every day. Yeah. Every day you woke up to it's somebody still looking like for that, an eight ball. An like... eight ball, a gram, a quarter ounce. They were leaving to my aunt somewhere for a month. They wanted to take it with them. There was always a way to make money in those days. So one night I saw him. We were, we were working together for like three weeks. Me sending people over there or me picking it up from him and And we had worked out a percentage. Yeah. Like like five points a week. Give me like fucking 100 cash. And right. Give me a, and I'll tell you what, give me a gram of Coke. Because it's 100 to me, but it's 65 cost to you. Yeah. <clears throat> He's like, no, I'm cutting the percentage. And I was like, you just made a bad mistake. Like in the back of my mind. You I fuck know, with the wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. I go, you yeah. getting robbed. Yeah. Like I already knew I was going to rob him. That's like, hilarious. Like he was just on a hook. I would just put people on a hook. Give him time to forget about what happened. Yep. Whatever altercation happened between us, I'd give him uh, six months. And one day when the timing was right, i clip you. <laughs> I would bang you out. I'd wait, and I'd even learn your delivery schedule. That's insane. Like I knew who you were getting it from. If I would drive by and see his car in front of your house, you just picked up. That means it's in your house. That means if I go to a bar tonight and you're at the bar drinking with your friends, there's nobody at the house.
You're just like me. That means I got an hour to get down to your house, kick the fucking <laughs> and I would just kick your door in. No there was, way. There was no fucking thievery or door Well, it's not picking. like they're going to call the cops. No, uh, my no, blow's no, missing. No, what are you going to no, say? No, no, no. That's what I knew. And then they would come to me, but they wouldn't have sufficient proof. Yeah. And I had six gorillas that I grew up with that wouldn't let something like that happen to me. It's insane. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wouldn't let this go down. So it was forgotten about. People would just move on and go, that motherfucker robbed me. Did you ever do that and regret it? Did anything bad ever come out of it? Yeah, I got a reputation, and then everything that happened got pointed at me. Oh, right. Then everybody thought you did everything. So once everything, any, anytime somebody got robbed, it was me. And then what happened was I got accused of doing something that I really didn't do, and it destroyed me. What was it? Because they were close friends of mine. A friend of mine said I robbed his house. I wasn't even living in that area at the time. Oh. So I had to call the chief of police, who I knew personally. I hung out with his son. And I go, these people, these political people, accusing me of robbing the house. I live up in Creskill. I don't even come into that area because I had people looking for me <laughs> in the North Bergen area. I had like three drug dealers. There's people for me. looking for you everywhere. This was crazy. Those That's never usually a good alibi. That's how I lived. I would beat two or three or four people for 10000 apiece, 8000 6000 and I would lock myself up in a hotel for a fucking a month. Eating Jesus. Chinese food, snorting, blow in that area. And I'd wait for it to cool down. Then I'd come back like nothing happened. That's so crazy. And nothing would happen. I've never broken into someone's house. Well, I like to get revenge, but only for personal. Like, if someone hurts me personally, like emotionally, I'll get fucking revenge and do crazy well, shit. Well, at that time, like you said, I was in pain. Right. And everything that happened, it was the world doing it to me. So... I would have to rob you. That was my way of lashing out at the world, was by robbing people. Yeah, and sometimes I just feel like I want to make someone, like if someone hurts me, I'm like, oh, I want to make them feel it. Like I want to teach them a lesson, but I want to do it in a way that they'll like never know it was me, but they'll feel what I felt. And then I get revenge on people, and then I always regret it. My friend Sarah says, before you seek revenge, dig two graves, one for you, one for them. Every time I've gotten revenge, like within a month, I regret it really bad. The last person I got revenge on. Actually, the last person I got revenge on, you were with me. <laughs> well, you weren't with me when I got the revenge, but you were with me when I was talking to this dude and he hurt my feelings and he blocked my number and I was upset and he said some mean shit to me. And then I came back to L.A. Now I can say this because there's no police report, but I came back to L.A. and one night I got drunk and I put on a cape a Supergirl cape and a fuckboy patrol hat. And I went to his house with my girlfriend and my gay friend in the middle of the night and I hopped a fence. And then I got inside and I sat on the ground and I had no plan. Like I came for revenge, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So then I started pulling pieces of paper and markers out of my purse and I made a bunch of signs that said crazy shit like seeking hot guy who will fuck me has to text me back. If you know someone, please give him this number. I wrote a number on the sign. Then I drew a picture of me with like huge boobs. Like I drew like a caricature of what I look like and said, this girl is DTF, no drama. This sign has been glued to your door with pussy juice. And I taped all these signs to this guy's door in the middle of the night at like three o'clock in the morning. But the inside of the house. Well, on the outside of his door, it's an apartment complex, well, let's, actually. Let's get this out of the way. This is not revenge. This is an act of alcoholism. <laughs> no. And cocaine. No. Yes, it was. No. That's why I was. I wasn't. You were mad, mad at, at me. You, you were a little mad. I wasn't mad at you. I was just. It was revenge. It's disappointing because you're on a different level in your life. I shouldn't be dealing with and that. That's just. If he fucking hurt you directly, I can see. He didn't do nothing. He did you hurt know, me. You and him have been going back into stupid game for 10 fucking Five years. Five years. So, you know, that's not revenge. I've never, there was one girl. I, I thought it was funny. On because she called the cops on me, something like that. I seek revenge. But that type of stuff, you will end up in trouble. You will dig two graves for yourself. But and it was is, revenge. This is a small community. It was, it was revenge for something he had said to you. So say something back to him. No. But to jump his fence and to put pussy juice on his door. What well, wasn't real and pussy to put juice? A video of your pussy with you talking 
That was just a little Adderall talking. That you didn't think Adderall. that was funny? Not even by a fucking third of it. No, the apology video, the not talking even, vagina? Not even at any level. Wait, Lee. In fact, Lee and I even had a conversation. Lee will tell you. We were both like... I want to hear. No, yeah. We were both like, what are you thinking? Wait a minute. If you got in a fight with your girlfriend, me and this guy were like... That was just out of fucking bounds. The pussy we, video or the hopping the, the fence? The whole thing. I think the, the pussy video thing. is hilarious. He is not the even, people don't he know. Is, he is not even your boyfriend. No. He is not even your boyfriend. But he was mad at me, so I sent him. Okay, yeah. listen. No, no, the no, people no. don't was, know. I sent him a talking vagina apology. I said, I'm sorry I made you mad, and I made my vagina talk. And I no, said, don't no, be mad no, no, at no, Kate. No, no, no. Be mad at this pussy. You can even beat it up. I thought it was hilarious. No, 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 no. That was just, <laughs> that was way over. That's like funny. Say, you've been with this guy, messing around with him, playing head games with him for five years. <laughs> you know, you get what you deserve. I don't you play know, head games. People really don't know. You know, you really got to know the animal you're dealing with in a relationship and life. And sometimes you got to learn when to fucking back the fuck off. Yeah, you know? but I, but you, he, I, he. I am the most veng <laughs> I am the most vengeful person in the world. He blocked me. And so yeah, so oh, that for means, nothing. That means move on with your fucking life, and you don't want to be bothered. But now for you to jump his fence, listen to what you did at three in the morning. The we cop, have plans. The cops could have came. <laughs> what if the cops would have showed up? That would have been amazing. No, it wouldn't. I would have got a mug shot. No, it wouldn't. Have. No, it wouldn't have. Not in today's fucking society, in today's environment. Foot and. Some guy fucking smacks you or grabs your pussy and you stab him. I'm driving you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some guy gets out of control with you. I'll drive you and give you the weapon and get rid of the weapon and burn the gunpowder off your hand. I'll help you. Thank you. Because I'm that type of person. I, know I think what this it feels is worse. Like. I know what it feels like. It's like a, a dear friend once told me, if you come to me and tell me the truth and don't miss a detail, I'll do anything in the world for you. Me too. So, but when you pick those battles, that that was just dumb for me to see. That was the worst thing. But I you think, ever, and you know what I wrote it off to the Adderall and the alcohol. But here's the thing: because you get crazy, I see you get crazy on those Adderall things. I hardly ever take Adderall. And you get crazy. And they the, stock up in your body, and I could tell when you're tweeting, and you're on that shit. That's really? how good. That, yeah, that's how good I am at it. I just told my listen. I am an addicted sack of shit. <laughs> I have done every drug there is. So there's one thing about me. You cannot come at me any other way. I, we have a mutual friend. About three months ago, I looked at him and I go, that guy is doing blow. And Lee was like, you think so? I go, I know what you're talking about. Trust me, I'm telling you, I've been there and I know the characteristics. I know the characteristics. Yep. I know I've been at every, I've been hooked on Vicodin. I've been hooked on Valium. I've been hooked on coke. You know, I never got a dependency to heroin because I never did it back to back nights. I always waited a week. But I know the steps of a junkie. I am yeah. a junkie. That's why I was depressed with you. Because the drugs had something. This is something Kate the comic would have not done. And this is why you have to check every level of what you do, especially in today's environment. You know what? For me, when someone blocks me, and I know it's my abandonment issues, and I know it's my own shit I need to like work on. But when someone blocks me, like I would, you crazy. I would rather a guy punch, punch me yeah, than block. Especially if I didn't. The thing is with that dude, and I know what you're saying. It was immature, but that guy literally like does it for fun, and I couldn't take it anymore. I yeah, just snap. No, I snap. That's what we do. I mean, but he doesn't it's even a have a game. reason. He'll go, "I love you." Block, bam, block. and then block you. You know why he blocked me? Because I said that he went down on me while I was on my period and it meant he was in love with me. Yeah. And, and he got wants, mad. Sure. Nobody wants to hear that. We're adults here. What do you mean nobody, nobody wants, wants to, to hear, hear that. that? Nobody wants to we hear that. We talk about puking all yeah, over. Yeah, but nobody wants to hear it or tweet it when it's about them and you're that type it. of guy. I didn't tweet it. Whatever I said it on a podcast. Yeah, so what do you expect? I didn't say who. It didn't matter. He fucking heard it. He's going to be the first one listening to your podcast and, you know, it's just it's a compliment. Like Listen, how do you get how do you get in somebody's pants? Me? When you really want somebody, how do you get in somebody's pants? Anybody. Well, you know how you get in somebody's pants when you really want them? You leave them alone. 
or reject them a little. Nobody can figure it out. When you're not on somebody for two months and one night you're like, I'm done with this bitch. You go to a strip club and you bother the same bitch every night for two months. She's not she interested. tells you she's got a boyfriend or whatever. And then you go in there and you pull out the baddest bitch for 800 or 1000 bucks, whatever she wants. <coughs> Next night when you come back, that strip is going to be pissed off at you. There's just something about women and men that drives us crazy. Rejection. When we get shut down. Comics have the same. I used to study comics at the store. When a comic is big time and he's holding court, he's not concerned about the six people that are holding court. He's concerned about the one guy standing in the corner not listening to him. Always. Okay? He's not pissed off about the seven people. There. He's not concerned about them. He's got them. Yeah. I've seen stars go up to the store. I've been sitting in the lot just smoking pot watching. And I would watch the, the so-called stars, you know, holding court. But certain comics not even giving a fuck that they were there. And you could see it was driving them crazy. <laughs> it's human nature. It's to, human nature. To want the one that's not paying not attention. Not paying attention to you. I, use, I do this sometimes. Like, I was at a party one night, and there was a guy I was into. And all the girls were kind of into this guy. Like, everybody was trying with him. And I talked to him for a few minutes. And then I just went in an empty room at this party. And I sat down on a couch, and I just started watching TV. Like, I literally just did my Done. own thing. I come over to you. 15 minutes later, he came in the room, That's hung it. out with me the rest of the night. And it was just because I was the one that wasn't trying. Done. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I That's felt it. like I won. We were talking about it yesterday, that how... My reaction is to woman. This is why if, if, if something come up, it's bullshit. Because I need to break your balls. Like, I've had... Like, I, in Boulder one time, I was on a date. And I had met this girl, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like an online date. I knew her, and we went out to eat or something. And I didn't know. Like, you ever see that movie, Blind Date? Uh, Before they I'm took it, it's sure. an old movie from 87. It's hilarious. Bruce Willis and Kim Bassinger. No, I know. This is when Kim Bassinger really didn't know what she wanted to do. She was making all these movies yeah. with these good-looking leading men. And she did this movie with, with Bruce Willis, and they told him specifically not to give her booze. To like, give her, oh, like booze. There were some people that you cannot give booze to. And before I took this girl out with my demented mind... A friend pulled me aside and go, whatever you do, do not give her alcohol. And then my demented male mind. You're like, hell like, yeah, I'm giving That's it. the first thing I'm doing. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So the first place I took it was for a shot. And once she had the first shot, she lost it. And she started having more shots and getting louder. And now I'm like, what am I going to do with this girl? So I figured, let me take it back to the bar where her girlfriends work so she could calm down now. By no means, I do not want anybody to get me wrong. I wanted to fuck this girl more than anything in the world. She was beautiful. Yeah. I can't even believe she was on a date with me. I was just starting to do comedy, and she had a beautiful ensemble. And we were pulled up at the parking lot. She's going crazy in the car, like singing loud, like Lee. What I had a, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, a girl came over to Lee's house and was talking about ayahuasca and oh. all this shit. And he. Lee almost dialed nine one one because Lee can't handle. I can't handle that shit either. Yeah, I I don't drink, so a drunk yeah. woman gets on my last. Fucking <laughs> Me nerve. too. I now, hate drunk people. There's two types of drunk women. There's drunk women that are a pain in the ass, and there's drunk women that are fun. Yeah, she this at least this girl was fun. Was fun. She yeah. was making me laugh, but as we pulled up, she turned around, looked at me, and she goes, "This is a perfect place for us to fuck." <laughs> And she took his shirt, and no. she just ripped her clothes off. That was her freak. She liked when you ripped her clothes off. Yeah, well, who does? She ripped her clothes off. In the car? In the car, ripped her skirt off, and here we are in the parking lot banging, and I, I'm, like, out of water. Like, I, she fucked the shit on me in the car. I got to walk into this bar, like, with pussy on my breath and shit. Oh. And, I'm like, and they're like, where is whatever her name was? And I'm like, uh, she's in the car. I couldn't tell her she couldn't come in because she was, her rip was shredded. Oh, her clothes were gone. Her clothes were shredded. Yeah. She was sitting in the car with like a blanket on, waiting for me to bring her like a fucking vodka tonic. <laughs> so I came out, I brought her vodka tonic. Holy shit. We finished fucking in the car. We went back to my place. I gave her like sweatpants and a shirt now. She was adopted. 
and her real brother was visiting her from out of town, and her brother knew how, the type of freak she was. And when I, when I dropped her off, she had her clothes. How? When I dropped her off, she had her clothes in her hand in a bundle with her heels. Like she had ripped her off her top. Wait, what did you give her to wear? A shirt or something? I gave her, I took her back to my house and gave her like sweatpants. Oh my God. She was tiny. She was a tiny chick. Yeah. So I had like fine chick, I had like fine clothes from other chicks like that I had, you know, like a, a <laughs> surplus chicks. over the years. You know, like you keep like a pair of panties of or course. something. Yeah. So I dressed her up and I remember taking her home. And I'll never forget like her, like she was in. Like, she loved it that I attacked her and, and that she ripped her clothes. I mean, she kept telling me, rip my skirt. And I was like, I can't. You know, and then she, then we kept dating. And she would tell me, rip my clothes off. Just don't rip the bra because they're $40. <laughs> rip everything else off. She would have, like, dollar store panties. And I would have to rip them off. Oh, my God. So, but I don't even know the point we're getting to here. When she first told me, when she turned to me, Kate, and said, so, are we going to fuck? Kate. Every piece of energy left my body. Like, I was ready. If I could have, I, I would have pressed the button. You know how the early James Bond car, you would shoot out of the car? <laughs> like, I would have shot out of the car. Oh. Because I'm the type of guy, I have to tell you, Kate, you're looking good. Let's see what that pussy tastes like. If you bring it upon me, there's guys that fold. Huh. Have you ever met a guy where you were aggressive with him and he kind of, Folding a little bit? Kind of. Yes. Kind of. I'm one of those fucking fags. I'll fold on the fucking questioning. It's happened to me before where I'll go out with a guy. Okay, this drives me insane. If you want to get a girl to fuck you, here is a great way to do it. It's happened to me a couple times that I'll go on a couple dates with a guy and I'll be into him. But I'll hold back on fucking him because I don't want to do it too soon because I, I like him. Right. Or I'm trying to set some precedent like, oh, I want to actually date him. And a couple times, if I don't fuck him by like date three or four, they kind of disappear. And if I like them, then I start to try to use the sex to lure them back in. I haven't done this in a while, but there's one guy in particular. I literally, the last night we hung out, we were like almost hooked up, but we didn't. And I was like, next time for sure, we're fucking. And then the guy never took me out again. And I would text him every once in a while, like I would send him a hot photo. I'd be like, I'm in your neighborhood. Let's get naked. I eventually just went straight to let's fuck. Like I was just throwing it out there because I was once someone won't sleep with me, but I've had a taste. I want it. I want it. I can't help it. I'm and like especially when they pull back. Yes. Or especially when they go, you know what? I'm going to pass on Kate. Yeah. Because I'm like, why? What happened? And then it, it makes me go a little nutty because I'm like trying to figure out why doesn't he want to fuck me? And then, of course, like. The arrogant part of my brain is like, he's gay. Like, that's my first go-to. I'm like, he's got to be gay. Why won't he fuck me? Or he has a girlfriend. But it's happened to me three or four times. If I don't fuck him by date three or four, they don't try. And then once I, yeah, once you throw it out there, you send a naked photo, you try too hard, they're out. They're out. Some guys cannot be, and a lot of guys listening to this going, yeah, Joe, you don't know what you're talking I'm telling you. I've had friends that have told me the same situations. I had a friend that, I have a dear friend that I still talk to. And when we were kids, I was living in Colorado and went home. And one night he goes, I want you to meet me at this bar. I want you to meet me with my new girlfriend. And her name was Karen. But after years, we started calling her crazy Karen. She was the real deal. <laughs> and this was like maybe their fourth date or their fifth date. And he, he got up to go to the bathroom, and she looked me straight in the face, and she goes, so what do I got to do to get your friend to fuck me? And I was, like, at a bar. I was 21. I didn't know how to react. Like, what are you talking about? And she goes, I've done everything I can for your friend to fuck me. Is he gay? Are you his gay lover? Like, I, and she was from Jersey. She was like, are you a faggot? Is he a <laughs> faggot with you? And he walked back right into the conversation. And? And he goes, what's going on? I'm like, no, we're just talking. He goes, no, no, tell him. What's the deal? Are you ever going to fuck me? And he fucking turned pale. And he was like, what type of fucking woman are you? Like, I was in shock. And then they ended up dating for years. And they oh, they fell did. in love. And yeah. But after that, she was crazy, Karen. So it worked, though. See, but, like, that's my, dr like, dream. Like, I, I was always, like, when you said that, like, girl, if you like someone, the way to get them is to not pay attention to them, I didn't get that memo. Like, like I, 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 you have to figure it out. I And I, I did now. But it's, no, it's true. 
I've been single all like 10 months and when I don't return a call or if I like have to cancel because I have a podcast or I'd rather do an open mic, they they call it like they're all they want to do is come over. And I was nice for 28 years, 29 years, and it got me nowhere. And like it's so the, that that annoyed me, but then it also I would love like it's crazy that you don't like when girls are aggressive. I like that's what I need. No, I would love that. Oh, you need a girl to smack you in the no, face. No, I don't want anyone to smack me. I need but I like to smack you in the face. I like when they like. I, it's <laughs> on you. Sometimes that's I feel like a need. pervert because as guys, you always have to be the one to initiate. You do not. Well, but once a girl initiates, in my past, I don't know. I like the guy to kind of like manhandle me a little. But every once in a while, it's fun to dominate. A guy every now and then. I don't want to be then. dominated, but just like... Just to... You need to get dominated. You need all uh, these things. Every once in a while. You need Kate to smack your open hand in the face like Khabib did to Conor McGregor in the third round. Just bit slap you and call you a faggot. Eat my pussy, you little fucking faggot. <laughs> you know? And you're like, fuck you. Don't call me a faggot. I'm not a faggot. You need and a she... girl to throw you down and, and just sit smacks, on your face. Then no. she backhands you with like a glove. Eat my pussy, you fucking little <laughs> Jew <a> faggot. <laughs> and you're like, don't call me a Jew. You're anti-Semitic and all this shit. You <laughs> Wait, Lee, do you eat ass? No, no, not a, not a chance. Why? There's poop up there. You don't have to stick your tongue all the way up it. You don't even like lick around it. There's another. There's, there's plenty of th- other things to do. Seven oh. years I've tried to get him to. You I'm have eating, to. No, I don't. That's what brings them back. There's shit up there, and I don't time. care how many showers no you take or how there. little you eat. You have a story about taking tinfoil out of a woman's butthole. Okay, but I'm still here. Did I die? <laughs> Did I die? No, I'm still fucking here. That's what I'm saying. I know, but I don't want to live my you life get, having eaten pe- someone's asshole. You eat somebody's pussy, you flip uh, her over, you lick her asshole. Even if you get a little piece of shit on your tongue. No, 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 it's no. It's no big deal. Oh, it's yeah, of course. Shit you've been, uh, go look up the rate of a fast food burger. Remember when they did that movie years ago about Yes, McDonald's but it's not wrapped up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They last they, forever. That they had a 98 fresh. of a burger, those frozen burgers yep. at McDonald's. They didn't say McDonald's. But it was called Super Size Me. Super Size Me. Yep. And it said that every hamburger, they found fecal matter on every hamburger. Well, there's fecal matter on your phone. Fecal there's matter. fecal matter everywhere. So but I'm not going to stick my tongue in the, in the source. Listen, but there's I probably some on this cup. I don't want to get is. fecal matter from a phone. But if I'm going to get fecal matter, I'm going to get it from a girl's from asshole. From an asshole. I'm getting it right from the source. My, my thing is, if you, like, I like guys that, like, love to devour women. So which ask is them just... to do it. I don't. <sighs> that's why you always be single. No, that's fine, then. If, if, I have to, if I have to do that to you get a I don't want to do you that. You were in love with Paula because you didn't have to have sex. You were No, I like having you sex. Had I don't. sex once a week. She wouldn't suck your dick in the morning. She wouldn't suck your dick at night. She wouldn't suck your dick when you were dry. You know, you like that because you don't want to be. You have to be free with a woman, Lee. That and doesn't gotta, mean I have to eat asshole. You have to eat asshole. No, That's it, all part of it. It's just, we really like If you it. love somebody and you get a little fecal matter on your tongue, a little piece of shit, no big deal. <laughs> you spit it out like a watermelon seed. You ever get a watermelon seed in your mouth? You just spit it out. <laughs> And you keep eating that fucking asshole like it's a fucking like a cupcake. And, I uh, mean, I understand not wanting shit on it because don't you like want to please your partner. Have you not in that way? Oh my god, you don't know what it's like to put two fingers in there, pussy, from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Just move it gently oh and at the same time, lick that little asshole. <laughs> Lick it and machine gun that tongue, and they'll start going, oh, oh, and you just start fingering them fucking harder. And then you put three fingers in there and you start switching it like a washer and dryer. Tell them, <laughs> Kate Quigley, and that pussy's Wait, making noise. What's a washer and dryer? When it goes like this, like, I don't like the, when the your spin hand turns, cycle. you put three fingers <laughs> in there, or and you spin cycle, and then you spread it out. You do like the three, you give like a three single, like a, a, a and you eat that ass the whole time, and then moaning and groaning, and then all of a sudden you feel a different type of a grease coming out of that pussy. It's like a grease. It's like a different type of, <laughs> of mabukia juice, and it's making noise. It's going, wah, wah, wah. and you you fucking you grab it, and then you press the clit with your thumb like a fucking savage. You fucking turn it around, and your whole hand is spinning. They're going crazy. Yeah, like, but you don't need to lick the asshole. You already got bananas. the clit. You lick the asshole. You do the spinner, and then you take that leg and you fucking spin them violently. And you pick up the one leg and you put it right here in your shoulder and you just stick your dick. You have two choices, right? Freshen their asshole because it's nice and mamooked up from your tongue. 
Oh, no, you, you can't just stick it in there without. No, you fuck can't. Yeah, there's we no need permission. Consent. There's, there's consent. no consent. No, just, don't say. It. I just had my tongue in your ass. That's the, that's a hint. Tongue that finger. Was, no, that's very different from a dick. Well, no, no, no. I'm going with the tongue, and then before I switch up in the tongue, I'm gonna take my finger from up here and stick it in your asshole. And if I can push it all the way back Ooh. and feel connect my <laughs> finger, your finger with the is other a lot finger. smaller than your dick. My finger is a lot. Yeah, but that's why I'm priming it. I'm All priming. Right. I'm You're warming really up the joint. Priming. But what I'm doing is I'm fake. I'm I'm putting the Malukia finger in your pussy. I want my index finger to meet my pinky. What the fuck is the Malukia <laughs> finger? The Malukia fingers that Ronnie James Dio <laughs> does like this. So if I could put uh, the, my finger, my big finger in your asshole, and then my pinky in your pussy, right. and touch them together deep. And now well, let me explain something to you. When you have your finger. In their asshole, that deep. Gotcha. The cave of death opens up. Oh my and there's god! There's gonna be like a wait, smell wait. of ass in the is air. The ass not always. Pussy. Which one's the cave of death? The cave of death is the asshole. Okay. Once you have the cave of death open in the room, and your finger in them, oh my and it's god! Going, and you got spit in your finger. It does smell. You could smell the Ew. inside of that kidney. Ew. Like you could smell it deep in the kidney. Oh, no. But you don't give a fuck because you're in love. Uh. You're pleasuring your partner. She knows. So right there, the asshole is three quarters open. Plus, it's lubed with saliva, the best lube there is. You flip them over, and you keep that one leg by your ear. It's water-based. You hook the fucking arm in. You hook it in so the leg can't go nowhere. And you got two ways to put your fucking kakuta in their little muffler while they play with their pussy in front of you, which Kate loves. You put it in their ass, and they start playing with their <laughs> monkey, and you just pound their fucking asshole. And you put, you reach over and grab the far shoulder to get what? momentum. So everybody, oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't even need to draw a diagram of whatever. This is craziness. This is what fucking animals like Kate. What you have to do to them. I mean, I I stopped letting guys put their dick in my ass after you told me they wouldn't take me to dinner anymore. Now, let me ask you this: If a guy puts his like, we're doing coke, we're coked up. I got a fucking or Viagra in me. The coke ain't the kick. The game ain't dying. So I'm banging Kate, and she's playing with her Maluk stick herself, right? right? That now I can't mix dicks and asshole. No, you can't mix. So now I got to pull it out and come in the mouth directly while she's playing with a pussy. That's the party. So you want to suck a dick that has shit on it? She don't give a fuck. She's a savage. Do you think she's concerned about fecal matter? I I would be. She just got Ah! fucked to death. Her insides feel like fucking they threw a bomb, like the Korean shot a missile in her no, pussy. I, That's what it feels like right now. She's sucking that dick like to, to get her oxygen back in her Joe, with No, her. no, and I don't. And now you start coming and while she's swallowing. <laughs> I she, don't she, want fecal matter in my mouth. But, but, so why do no, I have to But it's mouth. four in the morning and you're already in. You already licked his I balls. don't do anal anymore. You already anymore. pissed on you. You know, the whole fucking deal. I like a finger in there while you fuck me, maybe. Like, yeah. you know, I'm cool with that. Which I'm, finger? The, or a finger, what thumb, finger? whatever. <laughs> Which finger? The middle finger? finger? That's what matter. Analyze what finger. A thumb. They thumb want something good. in there. And when you get the finger up their ass, you know what the closure is? There's a closure? Yeah. You hook it. What? You hook the asshole with the finger. You don't leave it in there straight. I have to hook. That's why I call it the Are you hooking to? Whatever's whatever I can whatever's in there, and I, <laughs> and I pull you towards me from Piece your asshole, shit. from in your asshole. I pull you. Th- I trim my fingernails, so I pull you deep in, so it doesn't scrape the inside of your asshole. And it's like that hook is the whole thing. The finger in the ass is nothing. It's when you curl your finger and you scrape. It. You ever see? You ever hear two cats fucking? And the cat, the mama cat's like, Meow. that's because he's scraping that helmet in that. I don't think I've heard two cats fucking. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> you have it like is. seven cats. Your cats fuck? No, no. No. You hear it outside. In though. Israel, there's hundreds of stray cats. So you hear it every night. It's terrible. Oh, I haven't been to Israel. That's and not then, what I think of when I think of Israel. After you come in their mouth and they finish playing with their pussy, you mysteriously. Like, get your hand to their face so they could smell their own pussy and their own oh. asshole. And women love all that shit, Lisa. It doesn't yeah. seem like they do. We have one Look, here who doesn't she seem like they like did. She didn't say a word. Listen, about here's it. what I have to say. She loves this is the mindset you have to have when I'm you're very, gonna be a savage. I'm very careful to be <clears throat> sex ready to the point where, like, if I shit during the day, I'm not kidding. If I shit during the day, I will, like, get back in the shower and make sure everything is clean That's how in case I hook up. But, and I will even like go so far as to like clean up my butthole, not for anal, because I'm not doing that until I'm like in love, but for well, a finger. Here, do you look asshole? Um, if a guy wants me to, I will. Uh, but I will say 
I will make sure he's had a shower. I'm oh, not yeah. licking a guy's shit. Fuck that. See, no, 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 no. You go in the shower, Lee. That's what I'm saying to you. A guys will let American you know. goes in the shower. Yeah. Like if I'm if I expect a girl to suck my balls, my balls are in bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? So I gotta give them all the attention they can. I go in the shower, I dry them off nice. Do you like a specific soap? Like a real I got, intense I soap? I got this creamy, I think, use like a loofah. The loofah the You loofah sack. your balls? Me, I Fuck do. yeah. That's and nice. I, and I loofah. I have a little loofah I cut out. <laughs> you I cut, cut it out? And I loofah my asshole because that hummus delivers around your asshole. Hummus? And when you lick somebody's asshole, they don't. They can wipe all you want, put water around oh. it. Yeah. But barnacles from the shit will cling That's onto the real, sides. No. So you have to get those barnacles out. So that's why I get the loofah, and I stick like a quarter inch of finger. Of my See, she didn't asshole. even know about the barnacles. I don't even trust her ass. I clean, clean up She's my clean. ass She's with clean. with summer's eve. Let me tell you something. And I've the heard girls, it tastes like skittles. The, the girls that fuck the most clean their pussies the most. Well, I don't the fuck the most. The girls that fuck one guy a month or one boyfriend then they have filthy fucking disgusting snatches. Oh my God. I have fucked chicks that'll fuck a different guy every weekend. Their pussies have been marvelous. Because they know it's apparatus. They got to keep it clean. It's a chick you start dating. They eat their ass in the morning and it smells funky because they take you for granted. I'm not. I'm actually kind of the opposite because you know that I don't have sex that much. Like, no, you never. But but like because I am really horny, I'm always ready. For so if the man. opportunity presents itself, I don't want to have to say no because I know that I like took a shit and didn't take a shower. So I'm just always ready, you know. I've gone. I went to a girl's house after a spot, and I took a shower there. Like I was like, "That's okay. I've, I've done been, that. I've been out of the. I was sweating the entire show. I would appreciate that. Yeah, I recently hooked up with a guy. This is a new one for me. I hooked up with a guy, and it was just okay. But I knew we had potential for it to be amazing. But I think he was just a little too drunk, so he wasn't like as hard as he could have been. And then. We ended up not hanging out again, and it's been really bothering me because it's the first time in my life a guy ever fucked me and di like didn't hit me up to do it again. And now it's like I'm on a mission to fuck him again because I need like I have to like prove that it can be better. Like I feel like it was mediocre. Well, it's like when you take that girl out the first time and you don't expect to have sex. That's funny because I wrote a joke about that years ago. About a particular girl that I s saved money for to take her out, and I was going to be the perfect gentleman, but the first night turned into a fuck fest. Really? <laughs> but on the way home, I forgot to lick her asshole. Like on the way home, I was like, fuck. So rude of you. That's how rude. I didn't flip her over. I didn't lick her asshole. I didn't come in her mouth. I had, there were so many things I hadn't done. <laughs> Can you believe so I, I hit her up. This is when rude. I'm 20, This is when I'm 22, 23. I was a fucking <laughs> animal. I had no manners. In fact, this is in Colorado. And I called the girl back up, and we went to a movie. Like, after you fuck somebody, like, there's two parts of you as a young man. You really want to be romantic and do something with them, but at the other time, you want to take them home and fuck them and show them what you can really do. Like, you even bring notes this time, <laughs> eat her ass. Like, bring notes. This time, choke her. Like, and like remember, a set list. And I remember going out with her. And I, like, stuck my foot in my mouth. It was like dinner in a movie. And it was one of those movies that just would not end. <laughs> you were dying. And the whole time I'm fantasizing about eating her pussy and sucking her titties. And, and eventually I went over there, but it was humiliating. Four hours of fucking nonsense for me. Like, you forget. You forget, like, you were so hot in the moment that you forgot to look at a pussy in the light or shit like that. So it would force me to call him back. That's how crazy I was at that age. At yeah. that particular age. Yeah. I was that crazy. But I learned something when I was really young. I was in love with a girl. I was brutally, honestly in love with this girl. My mother had died. Something had happened. And I thought this girl would save my life. You ever been in love with somebody and you think they're going to save your life? Like, yeah. That's how I, how much in love I was with this girl. And I played the stupid game with her, you know. I, I played the stupid phone game with her. And I knew the girl wanted dick. Hmm. Like, I knew it. I'm not, bro, I'm not that crazy. But the girl held me off. She held me off. And then she made a bad mistake. One night we were having a conversation. She goes, like, somebody like you. 
I would never, ever hook up with you. And I hadn't said nothing to her. And my feelings got really fucking hurt. Like, yeah. here I was thinking I was making progress with the girl. You know, she doesn't have a boyfriend. She always breaks my balls. But if I'm dating somebody, and uh, I was like, okay, you're telling me. You're trying to tell me I'm not going to get you in bed. You got the wrong guy. And I'm not even going to Cosby you. I'm going to do it straight up. <laughs> I'm not even going to Cosby you. You know what I'm saying? Like, nice, this, yeah. like there's not even going to be alcohol involved. Yeah. Like, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove to you. It was a challenge. That I'm going to fuck you while you're fucking strong sober. It took me two years, Kate. But the reason it took me two years was because I walked away from her. And yeah. the first night we re-hooked up, after I ate her pussy in the car and the whole thing, after the lobster fry Diablo, and she broke down. I don't know, we were 18, we were, we were, you know. She broke down and she said that those were the hardest years of her life when I wouldn't call her for six months at a time. Like, when I cut you off, I cut you off. Like, I don't even pull a Vinny. Oh. I don't even block I hate it. that shit. This you is what I tell you. Yeah, when I, was that, when I was at that age, at that age, I had a motto. I lost my mother. By the age of 22, I had an adage in my life. And the adage was, if you love me, you wouldn't do this to me. Yeah. And I took that for friends. I took that adage for everything. You're able to stick to and, that. And I told, even with a woman, when I would date a girl, like we would date for a few weeks and they would do something crazy and I was out of there. Because for years I stayed. And I played the pussy girl. Even though oh, really? Like, yeah, listen, so what? You give a piece of pussy to somebody else. You let me come in your eyeball? Nobody else is going to do that for the price you let me do it. I take it to a hotel. I get a half a gram of Coke and I come on your face and you scoop the to come off your tits and put it in your mouth. That's priceless. You want to cheat on me, cheat on me. I'll cheat on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I had already gone through those levels. <laughs> but then came the level of if... You really love me. This is not when we date and we fall in love. Right. I'm talking about friendship love. Yeah. If you really love me, you wouldn't do this. So there was a time period after I was like, it was really bad after I got divorced. But the first time you did something that I didn't like. Gone. The phone stopped getting picked Yeah. Up. Gone. Gone. I, I'm the best at doing it because I lost my mom and my dad, so I know how to cut people out of my life. It's weird because I can do it really easily I would with do friends. It to, I would do it to friends. Now yeah. I do it to people, but I have to do it. Like, I was good. Like, the first person I did it to was that girl. Huh. We, uh, after that night that she told me she wasn't going to sleep with me, I still remained kind of friends, but my, my, my you know, my fucking feelings were hurt. Yeah, of Your course. Your feelings have been hurt. Yeah. So I was kind of cold to her. And then one night, she came up to me somewhere outside and said some shit to me like like I, I just just I just stopped liking her for a while after yeah. she said that to me. And I could t and I didn't know that it was bothering her. Oh so of she course. came up to me one night, went off on me and threw a cup of vodka in my face. <laughs> and but she, what she didn't know was she left the iced tea that she was drinking. She was drinking outside with her friends on the floor. It was cold out. Iced tea was half cold, and I walked up behind and I poured the iced tea on her head. Oh my God! And I'll never forget her shrugging her shoulders because that iced tea was cold and it was cold out. You're gonna throw a glass of vodka in my face? I didn't even say nothing. To I, you. That's crazy. Yeah, she was drunk, so she just came up to me and she's like, "What is your problem lately?" And you don't talk. And she threw the fucking glass of vodka. I mean, I'm, I'm not staying hit by an old woman, so I cut her off completely. I cut her off for about a year. Wow. And then I had a birthday party, and she didn't make it. And the next day, she called me. Like, I didn't invite her. But she called like nothing had happened. We became friends, and I kept her on a short leash. You know, if she told me she was going to be somewhere, I'd go, I'll meet you, and then I wouldn't show up. Oh, oh no, yeah. I fucking oh. you. So at 18, I already had it. I already had this thing with this broad. Oh. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you at that bar tonight. You and your girlfriends will be up there. I'll see you. Nothing. That shit makes Nothing. me crazy. I would do that to her twice a week. Oh, my God. <laughs> she wasn't my girlfriend. No wonder she fucked you. She wasn't my girlfriend. She wasn't nothing. She wasn't my girlfriend. She wasn't anything to me. But. We always had this like little light. We, we would get, we would go out to the same bar, 
All right, we would go, both go to a comedy store. You would go talk to Dane Cook and Joe Rogan, and I would go talk to fucking, uh, you know, Eliza and fucking Whitney Cummings. Yeah. And then I would talk to girls. You would talk to guys. And throughout the end of the night, we'd just be getting closer to each other. So by 2 o'clock, we would be back to back. Oh, my God, what a coincidence. Yeah. And she would ask me to light her cigarette, and then we'd talk, and I saw you talking to that girl. And here we weren't even dating. Like, there was nothing on paper. We hadn't fucked. Nothing. We hadn't even swapped spit. We had swapped spit two years earlier, one night. Wow. And she was like, that'll never happen again. So I knew I had her. So I was like, fuck you, bitch. So I stopped showing up at different places. I would tell her, yeah, I'll be down there. And then I stopped showing up. Oh. I stopped showing up. I would go and get fucked up with my friends. And then I didn't care at all. And people would come up to me like, what? Bro, she was looking for you at the bar last night. I'm like, I got this, bitch. And then one day out of the blue, she called me and she goes, so when are we going to fucking stop fucking around? And when are we going to do this? And I was like, I don't know. It's up to you. Depending on your behavior. And I remember I met her for lunch. Didn't kiss her. Nothing. Sent her away. I gave her coke to hold for me and her mother found it. Oh, and my God. she didn't God. tell her mother. She kept it. And her mother's like, are you on coke? And she's like, no, I'm holding it for a friend of mine. She was cute, cool as shit. She was cool as fuck, and I had played her like a fiddle. It took me four years, two after she told me she wasn't going to sleep with me. So what happened? And then she asked me, when are we going to fucking put this shit aside? And when are we going to do this? And I said, in time. And then I had robbed the jewelry store that afternoon. Like, I spoke to her that morning, and that afternoon... I told her I was to see her that night. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday in like June, the beginning of June. We had just gotten out of high school. And on the walk home, we went to Gilberto's to get a Cuban sandwich. Me, Fernie, and two other dudes. It was Fernie's birthday three days ago, and I wished him a happy birthday. And he he said, thank you. That, That was good enough for me. That put a smile on my face. It was June of 82, and it was me, Fernie, Stinky and this kid Pelly. And we went to Gilberto's. And I'll never forget saying to them, hold on one second. Let me see what's going on across the street at Michael's. They were in the car. We went to get food. And I walked across the street. Didn't have a buzzer on the door. I opened the door, walked into the jewelry store. I had a football jersey on and that was fishnet. Yeah. So you could see my nipples and shit. Okay. So I had a football <laughs> shirt on that was knit fishnet. Okay. That's how buffed I was. Damn. And from here, it was like a regular white T-shirt. And it had white numbers on it. And the rest you could see was my stomach. So the lady comes up to me and I go, she goes, how can I help you tonight? I go, I want to look at wedding rings. I was 18 years old. Oh, my God. And in those days, I would go in there and they would put the rings out for me. Like 30 rings. Yeah. But I would look, and whatever one would have two rings in the same thing, I would just take, take a ring and put it in my hand, and I would put it in my socks. I was a kid. I would have shorts on. Oh, my God. And one time I went in there and took two rings, and I brought them to a friend of mine, and he paid me for the diamonds, like 300 bucks or something. So here I am. I'm standing in this liquor store, in this jewelry store. My buddies are in the car, like, waiting to go home. And the lady brings the tray of diamond rings, and she turns her back. She goes, hold on, I have to talk to another customer. And the place was packed. And I took the rings, put them under my shirt. All of them? To go, Jack. Oh, my God. And I walked out of this jewelry store into the car. My friend's like, what are you holding? And I took the thing of rings on. They're like, oh, shit. You fucking did it. You crazy motherfucker. Oh, my God. So I went to Kurt De Lorenzo's house. God rest his soul. In fact, I'm going to West Palm Beach this weekend. And Louis Castellito's coming Saturday night. And if Louis Castellito comes to the show on Saturday night, if you're listening, I'm going to pull him up on stage. And I'm going to tell stories about me, him, and Kurt De Lorenzo. Look, I'm getting emotional oh just thinking God. about it. Because people are going to go, holy shit. I hung out with Louis from 1980 to 1982. Four or eighty-five. I knew Louie all my life. But what me and Louie did together, when we had the story about Kurt and John Crowley and how we hung out together once a week, it's going to kill that West Palm Beach improv. Like, he says he's coming for the second show or the first show on Saturday. If he shows up, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to stop my act. 
I'm going to get a microphone Aww. and I'm bringing <laughs> Louis Castellino up on stage and I'm going to open up with the story about when we, we, me and him made believe that we didn't hear sirens. A buddy of us, we all took acid and we were walking home from the family cinema. <laughs> <laughs> You were pretending not to hear them, and they were there because one of your and friends. My friend kept saying, "You guys hear that That's fucking s- siren?" <laughs> and you could hear it; it was loud as fuck. And, one, and me and I look at Louis like, "What it looked like?" No. And Louis like, "I don't hear no siren," and I'm like, "I don't hear no siren either." And the guy's like, "Come on, you hear a siren? I can't be tripping that hard on the acid." And me and Louis look at each other like, "Bro, <laughs> you are tripping that hard on the acid." Uh, I just told the story. There was a puddle on the floor. There was a pothole. With like three inches of rainwater, <laughs> and the kid looked at us, and we kept saying, "We didn't hear no fucking." Oh my god! Hear. And he bent over, and he started throwing puddle water. Shut up, <sighs> rainwater! <laughs> then, he just, then he just ran away. Wait, wait! I want to know about the jewelry store. So, so okay, don't they so have cameras? At this is 1983. They did have a camera because of this incident. They, they didn't, these so people didn't they even have a cameras? buzzer on the door at the time. It's insane. So this is June of '82. Now, I had robbed them over the last two years, maybe 10 times. <laughs> single digit things. Single oh digit God. things. A bracelet, a ring, a fucking little fucking thing. And that time, before I, now listen to this, before I robbed the jewelry that day, but when I was looking at the wedding bands, I look over on the counter and there's this circle thing. The thing that you spin around. Yeah. And it had gold chains in it. And on the bottom, it had gold bracelets. And I remember looking at it going, that's next. Oh, my God. And I took the rings, put it under my shirt, walked out, got in the car with those four savages. I told them to take me to Chris D's house, the fish man. And I go, fish, you got to get rid of these for me. And he got me, I think it was 600 a piece for him. It was 6,000 a piece. It was a ton of fucking loot. I think I cleared... Twelve thousand, something like that. It was something weird. I gave him a thousand for making the deal, because they couldn't be traced back, and we went on a tear. And that chick was waiting for me. And at the time, we were buying coke from this dude named Mister McGrath. He used to smoke camel cigarettes. We used to call him the Camel, Camel Breath, because he would smoke camel no filters, and his mustache was yeah. red, and his fingers were red, and he would sell you the coke already in a bottle. Without the spoon on it. Oh. So he would sell you the Coke already in a bottle. He was the only guy that didn't sell bindles. Everybody else, you know what a bindle yeah. is? Everybody else had a bindle. He sold you out of the little spoons. So I called that girl about six. And I go, Doug, I didn't tell her what I had done. She wasn't part of that world. She didn't know that we were a bunch of fucking criminals. Degenerates. And I said, I'll meet you at the bar at about 10, 10 30. In fact, I'm going to go. In those days, that kid, Louie. Yeah. Castellino, his street name was Digger. And we used to hang out at a pizza place named Roma Pizza. And next to it was like a business, but at night it was closed. And it had stairs. And we could sit there. On that wall, till maybe 20 years ago, he, he fucking went up there one night and wrote Digger on the wall. So when we were sitting there, it said Digger. And this is summer of 82. I got to meet this broad. And I went and bought 10 of those little vials. And me and my buddies sat on Kennedy Boulevard, which is like sitting on Sunset. Yeah. We bought a fucking case of nips, which is eight six packs. We hit them to the side so the cops wouldn't pull over. And we just sat down the steps doing blow out of the thing, drinking beer. And I popped a couple of valves and I blacked out and I didn't meet her, which drove her even oh, more crazy. Oh, no. I woke up blacked I... out. I woke up blacked out. I was at home like one of Cosby's victims. I had to sit up and think about what happened the night before. I remember sitting on the stairs. I started eating pills and snorting coke. I woke up. I still had like 9,000 cash, and I still had like two coke vials, and I called her right up. And, I, and she's like, what happened to you last night? Jesus Christ. And I go, oh, we got fucked up with these guys. And she, this took all week. And then I was supposed to meet her again Wednesday. It was ladies' night at this bar that we used to go to. So what you did was you gave a broad 20 bucks. It was 50 cent drinks. So, oh, so they'd buy your drinks. Yeah, all night. So yeah. You, you gave them 20 and said, yeah. go put it, start it to have, just buy me vodka, Tom Collins. So fucking crazy, man. And I was supposed to meet her again 
bam, again, I went to Jersey City, got a package. We went to some strip club. I didn't meet her again. Oh, my. I would have murdered her. And and listen to me, guys. I was brutally in love with her. Like, my whole day was thinking about us having kids and getting (laughs) married. Like, I'm not shitting nobody. I was so heartbroken from my mom's death, and I was yearning such a family that I actually thought I was going to marry her and have kids. And, you know, I was a fucking common thief. I'd quit high school. This girl had a great family. You know, her family was going, well, they all went to college. They had a family business in the fucking area. And it was it was just fucking crazy. You know what's crazy about that story is the guy that we were talking about earlier that you said we've been going on for five years with this bullshit. When I first, first met that guy, I was so in love with him, yeah, right? You're in in love. love. You're in love. But I had never done drugs when I met him, ever. Really? Yeah. I didn't ever try cocaine until I was like 32 or something. I met him when I was like 31. <clears throat> so he would do that shit to me where like we would go out and I, I was like, I felt like he was so in love with me. But then half the time he would just blow me off and not answer and not show up. And no guy had ever done that to me. And it would make me fucking insane, like so crazy. But years later, I always assumed he was sleeping with a whole bunch of other chicks. And that was why I'm like, oh, this guy's just fucking a bunch of girls. Later, when I learned about drugs, I realized, oh, once he starts partying, getting fucked up, I'm not going to hear from him. Like, they would do blackout shit. Like, he would send me photos the next day of him in, like, a freezer at 7-Eleven. Like, you know, stupid naked or something. So now, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I don't think that it was that he was fucking a bunch of people. It's that he was always high. Oh, yeah, we That's what talking. would happen. When I went out with my friends in those days, no matter how good looking we were, I got to look you in the face, look you in the eyes and tell you this. We did not go out to pick up pussy. That was the least of our problems. That's what I mean. We went out to get fucked up. That's how these guys like, were. We didn't want to talk. We wanted to nod on fucking lewds. We would get, our goal was to get fucked up, wasted, whatever you call it, whacked. See, back then That's, I never. That was never, the lingo. Let's yeah. get whacked tonight. Lots of guys. We're going to get whacked. I was never like that. Like, even when I party, even now, if I go, I went to Dan Vilzerian's party uh, a couple weeks ago, which is like a huge party. Like, people go to get fucked up. I don't. Like, I'll party a little, but like, I go to meet people and like flirt and have no, fun. I don't want to meet. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want nobody on that table. I don't want nobody that belongs there on that table. We would go out to get fucked up. And if a girl dared to come into our lair, <laughs> we would say a couple things to her. And if she wasn't on board, we'd sick Pelly on her. Our lair. And Pelly would say something to her horrible, and the girl would just walk away. <laughs> like he had no, he had no remorse for anything. So if a girl did come into our lair and talk to us, we would tell him right off the bat, "Listen, where's that piece of ass you were talking about?" And they would look at us like, "What are you talking?" I like to tell him to take a hike because I had a buddy who was Indian and Italian. Very good looking, blue eyed, brown hair. But whenever he would drink, he that's how he would pick up girls. See, there's two approaches to pick up women. There's the nice approach, and from him I learned that there was the no nonsense approach. He would just look you straight in the face and go, Kate, you have nothing going on. You're gonna sit at this bar with these fucking losers, really? Listen, I got a quarter ounce of coke. I got two bottles of Dom Perignon. Let's go back to my place. I'll stick a Coke Rock up your pussy. A woman would freeze. Like, they would just freeze. Yeah. Like, they would just lose their inhibitions and go, okay. And he would go, tab, whatever. He would pay her tab before the girl even knew what she was doing. She was in the car going to suck dick. It was too late to get out. It was too late. (laughs) That never works on me. He would talk them right into it. Like, Kate, you're up here at the store. What are you doing? You're wasting your time. Go do a bump of this and come back. I got an eight ball that's just at the house. We'll stop at the house, go get a bikini, come back to my house with jacuzzi, I'll eat your asshole, we'll get this party started. And girls would just look at him. Like, I remember seeing him one time pull a piece of ass at the beach. A piece of ass. At the beach. At the beach. That I could see. Took her under the fucking tunnel, fucked her, and they came back like nothing happened. Like he just met her at the beach. At the beach in front of me. Two minutes, talk to her. Da, 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 da. I can't Next thing you know, he was that. sitting next to her on the towel. Next thing you know, they went up. They were holding hands. They went in the water. I saw them making out. And next thing you know, they went that way. 
Then they came back on the way home. He goes, dog, I fucked the shit out of under the fucking bridge. No comment. No way. Straight cock. This is 82 before. Straight cock. I've yeah, never before. been able to do that, but. They were, he was fucking people straight up. That's insane. Straight up gangster. And coke is that big of a deal for some women? Like, they'll be like. In the, uh, it makes you horny. What's you get? Give me a credit card. You have your license on you? Yeah. When I first moved to Aspen in 84, this was, the, this was the the cocaine. Uh, uh, the, how do you get a girl in Aspen? Make okay. this noise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it still works at some parties. It's definitely- it, it makes her coming over to your house a lot easier. Jesus. Like nothing ha- And you don't have to ask twice. You just say that. I'm sorry, Kate. Just go listen. I got a grandma blow at the house. I love those pants on you. Let's go back and eat your pussy. You pay for your tab. You don't say another word because the first person who speaks loses. Don't even let her talk. Just pay, go through the motions, and turn your back. It doesn't most people work on follow, me, though. Most people follow you. Because I don't like to have sex too high. So but, if I do too much, I don't want to do it. We're not going to really tell you about the sex. We're going to feel it out first, try to lure oh. you back with the coke. And the quaaludes and another broad is coming the over. quaaludes. Another broad is coming over. Let's eat a half a biscuit. What the fuck, you know? You know what really worked on me recently is someone... Magic. <laughs> I know. You fucking momo. Fucking magic. A fucking magician. Uh, he was pulls a, a wicked, pulls not a, a rabbit magician. out of a hat. And you're like fucking coming all over yourself. Get it together. But actually, that guy. Okay, that guy managed to seduce me in the way in a way that no guy ever has, and it works so well. And now in hindsight, I'm like, it, I probably was retarded, and it was like clearly game. But this was his whole thing. His whole thing was, I'm so innocent. I never do. I've never done any of this. I never like every time you would touch me. Like he touched my leg and go, I'm sorry, I'm touching you. I didn't even, I, is that okay? Is that, he kept asking permission and acting awkward. Kind of like how Lee is. I was going to say, I do that. Yeah. But then like he kept on, like he'd get a little closer and then he kind of cuddle me. And then before I knew it, he was like, is it okay if I just feel your ass? And I was like, yeah, you don't have to keep asking. Like you're harmless. Like he was making me almost feel like, God, he's never done anything. Like I need to like let this guy have some fun like he seems kind of nerdy to the point where he even said to me you're not gonna believe i fell for this he said he's never felt fake boobs this is a rock star he said i've never felt i've never felt fake boobs do they feel normal and i was like do you want to touch them like i seriously believed everything the great thing about this town is what there's only one of the town that equals the disgust and the level of men like this town it's washington Oh, politicians. Like, when me and the stripper broke up, we remained friends. We really remained friends. Like, we, we there was a bumpy period there for, like, three yeah. minutes. That was awkward. And then it was funny because she showed up at the improv. She goes, I really miss watching you do comedy. Do you mind if I bring a date? Hmm. And one time her and I had gotten into an argument, and she pushed me, and I pushed her back, and I got arrested for assault. Oh, shit. And I never forget that she showed up with this guy that was steroided out to the gills. And Josh Wolf was standing next to me. And I look at Josh Wolf and I go, if she thinks I beat the fuck out of her, wait till this fucking Tarzan gets it. <laughs> we were laughing our asses off. But I saw what happened to her. Like she was a really pretty girl. I met her when she was 25. And we moved here when she was 28 at her peak. And she was a sexual deviant. Like she lived to be a sexual deviant. You know, she she would call me and tell me her pussy was Bombay and all that fucking lingo shit, which drives me crazy. You know, what does that even mean? I'll never forget that she would dye her hair blonde <laughs> and she would dye her pussy hair blonde and put a little streak for me with a fucking uh, what's a what's what's when you go bam? What do you put? A the, lightning the, bolt? Exclamation point! Exclamation point! She would put exclamation her pussy. points on a pussy. And dying blonde. I mean, she was crazy. This is what she did. She grew up in a cult. She was abused as a child. Damn. This is the result. But <laughs> one thing I noted about her was, and this is why I did get upset about the video, and I did get upset about the nonsense with Vinny, because the duration for chicks that play in that world, it's not a good longevity. It's like they say a running back has three years in his career. You can't play this game for a long time. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm not mad at you, and I'm not here to judge you or put you down, but I care about you and love you. That night I was very disappointed because the percentage of women that this town eats up and spits out, it's amazing. 
That's and true. I do not want you to be one of those women. Me neither. You don't need half of these good dudes that you've dated since we've been friends. They're pure garbage. I know. I mean, I mean, I mean they're not even, there's not even a little bit of class to them, except for the guy that you did that stuff to. I really like him. You there's, do? Yeah, there's something about him. He's a respectful young man. That's why I told you don't play with him. Yeah. You know, two things happened this last week, and things happen in life that people don't understand. You know, I was watching the Nicole Simpson, O.J. Simpson. And I tell you, and I tell Lee, and I tell the people who listen to this podcast every day, I want you to know the animal you're messing with. Before you go to that next move, before you go to that bar or that function, he was so cool. He worked at he I don't play none of that shit. Yeah. I want you to size up the person you're dealing with. So when they do slice your neck, you don't sit there and go, I can't believe he sliced her neck. Yeah. You know, this weekend, Conor McGregor got fucked up by Khabib Gamega Mega <laughs> He yeah. didn't know that animal existed. Yeah. When he lay there at the end of that fight, he didn't know that type of animal existed. And you feel bad. And it happens to you every eight weeks that you don't know how a, a Not person, that often. How, you know, two months ago, you were going to a guy's house and swimming and having a pool party, and he was engaged to another chick for eight years. You know, you have to figure That was a year ago. Well, whatever it happened. You're like, worse than Lee. I haven't gotten bronchitis in eight years. I know. Bronchi- and then D'Agostino told me. I tell you exactly what it was. I think I'm getting better and, at it. And what I try to say to you is the longevity of that shit for that woman. Those, those women in this town. When I went to Vegas this last time, I saw somebody who I was dear friends with in this town here. And she's still beautiful. She's still hot. But I could see the PTSD that this town did to her. I don't want that to happen to you as Me a woman. Neither. You're a great comic. Thank you. I'm not talking about, and I don't classify you as, oh, you're a great woman comic. No, you're a great comic. Thanks. And you're getting to a precipice like like Bobby Lee, like myself, like Theo. We're always at a precipice. You know, it's time for, for you to, you know. I know. Find the steady piece of ass. I don't even care right now. Nobody ever cares, but that I was not mad at you or nothing. I was just disappointed because where I'm coming from is that it's like if you met me 15 years ago, you'd be disappointed with me. Yeah. You go, Joey, you're killing at the store on a regular basis and you're still doing coke. Yeah. You know, it took yeah. somebody on their deathbed to tell me, to call me out and go, hey, man, you got to stop. Yeah. You know, and that's it. That, you know, like I said to you, not to embarrass you. I know you eat those fucking speed pills. I really don't take those much. I could tell when you're I don't. weeding. How good is that? But I, I could tell when you're tweeting on Adderall. I don't take it much at For all. For me to wake up in the middle of the night and see you tweeting and talking nonsense. I, I always know, tweet all night. I know you, it's the shit that you say some nights, and some nights you say crazy shit. And I could tell. It usually depends on what's going on in my in your head. Personal life. In your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You type it out and shit. I I've been tell. trying not to tweet at night, though. But, you know, like, I, I do know what you mean. And I think, I think I'm getting better. But I'm also, like, really, really trying to work on myself. Because I have a pattern with guys. And at some point you go, okay, it's not all them. It's your choice. You're picking these guys. And even the, la- even the musician. Like, I really thought I picked a good one. And he turned out to be... It's just... I need to pay attention to the first red flag and like walk away and and also though like I think I use guys as a form of cutting. I really do. I think sometimes in some ways like it's a form of self-sabotage like when everything is going great in my life, things are too good. It's like I'm not used to that, so then I need a little drama and then there's always some dude that's like hurting my it's it sounds crazy, but I I always say like I cut with dick. Like, I pick guys that hurt me, but I don't mean to, but I always do. So I'm really trying not to. You know, self-hate and pain is a fucked up thing. You know, one of the things I used to do when I used to do coke is look at my face. You see the scars? I would feel worms inside my face. And I would take a tweezer and just pick at my face until the worms inside my face would come out. That's a form of pain. You know, when I did drugs, I didn't do drugs to be cool. I did drugs because I was really in pain. And the hatred, like I've said a thousand times, I wouldn't even look at the mirror when I was on coke. I would pee and wash my hands and avoid looking at myself. 
self-hate, self-pain. You know, women use it by f being promiscuous. Women have a thousand weapons they do. Some of us cut each themselves. Some of us made bad choices. For me, it was lashing out at the world and doing drugs and robbing people and not having no, like wanting to die. Like putting myself in situations where I really don't care if I die. I don't really want to be on this planet anyway. I just yeah. don't have the balls to, board, to pull a Bourdain, to get a Bourdain starter kit. I don't mm -hmm. have the balls to fucking do it, but so I'll do other things to demolish right. me, you know. Life is a weird thing, and the behavior, we have to recognize it, and we don't. We don't while it's going on. Well, we don't recognize it for years later. I mean, the thing, the thing that's weird with me is, like, I really don't, I really like me. Like, I feel like I like me. Like, I know my flaws, but I also know, like, my good qualities, and I know I, I really do. People say, learn to love yourself. I'm like, no, I really do love myself. I just... I'm, I think that I'm finally getting to a point though where I'm happy alone and I think that's what it is. I think for so long like I needed someone to feel whole and now I'm finally like, like right now I'm like, I love being by myself. I was never like that. Like when I went up to uh, San Jose recently, I rented a car, I went by myself for the weekend, I like drove out to the coast and I like pretty much didn't even talk to anybody other than the shows and it was the first time I ever did that and was like happy, not lonely comfortable i've never been there you know i'm in my mid-30s it took me till now to feel okay by myself so i think that's changing it so like with the last guy even though i really liked him like when i saw you know that it was going to be awful i cut it off and i haven't gone like tried to go back which is different for me i remember after the stripper it took me two years to get a girlfriend not because i couldn't get a girlfriend just because i was so in love with comedy that I didn't want to go through that shit again. Well, there's something to that, too, because I just went out with a guy who's a perfect catch you would love, who's amazing and was super into me. But the truth was I kept choosing work over him every time, every time. And I realized, like, probably part of the reason I date the piece of shit guys is because I know in my head it doesn't really matter. Comedy's first. But, like, my career really is first right now. Like, that's it. That's all I really care about. And then even fucking, I don't, I haven't even had sex in so long. You just so said long. you hooked up two nights ago, you fucking dirty. No, I didn't. I didn't say so two I nights ago. I said the ago. last guy, but like, it wasn't three nights ago. It was a little while ago. <laughs> dirty bitch. <laughs> I think the last guy was the magic guy. <laughs> so, oh, you know, it's funny. The that, magician. Uh, uh, October 30th, my special comes out. And yeah. I wanted you to open, not open be my guest uh, star in New York. So we're going to kick so off excited. the New York Comedy Festival Thursday, November 8th. Two shows the 9th and two shows on the 10th. So, yeah, the part of this tour, what I'm doing is I want to take people who have come on the podcast who are fucking, you know, starting to headline, yeah. who could probably get 100 people a show on their own and get exposed to bigger people and make the shows that much better. So I'm going to have, like, George Perez in Cleveland. Yeah, George. That's always a fucking thrill. Yeah. I'm taking Lee to a dirty black room to Ooh. open for me. Make him do 45. Jesus. I'm going to take Lee to <laughs> Uncle Joey's training service. That's awesome. The guy called me and offered me the room, and I go, yeah, I haven't done a black room in a long Where time. Where is it? Somewhere down in Compton. And I go, can I bring Lee with me? He's like, I love Lee. I go, let Lee do 15. Hell yeah. He doesn't know that I'm going to cancel the night up and send Lee down to Compton by himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll be so fun, man. Do I, get, do I get to keep the check? What check? What do you mean? There has to be a check. There's no check. You're not doing it. It's a black room. There's a lot of hugs <laughs> and maybe a drink ticket and a half. That's a black room, Jack. They I love black rooms. Though. They don't pay. They give me a lot of hugs, dog. That oh. shit, your, your, your shit was tight tonight and shit. I love and that. they hug you or they crinkle up $5 singles. <laughs> put them in your hand <laughs> so it feels like a 50 with a drink ticket. And you don't know nothing until you get out in the car. You go in the pool and you're like, I don't want to drink tonight. You go out in the car and you're like, five dollars, fuck, but you're already in the car. A room in Compton. I wonder where it is. I'm I'll so never curious. forget years ago, about <laughs> ten years ago, I was still doing coke and some guy called me. He was like a beat promoter around town. And he goes, Hey man, where are you tonight? I got a big room. I got a big show tonight and I need a headliner. And I go, All right, and I made the mistake. I thought he always paid me a hundred bucks. Yeah. The headline. 
So he said, it's a big show. I figured it'd be like 200 bucks and stuff like that. And I'll never forget getting the money and putting it in my pocket and walking out to the car. And it was $60. Oh. And I fucking put that car in park and I walked back in. I pulled him aside and I go, dog, everybody in here paid fucking 10 bucks. Yeah. There's 300 people in here. You better give me fucking some more money. And he looked me in the face. He goes, if I give you another dollar, I'm never going to book you again. I go, give me $200 more dollars and never and lose my fucking number. What the fuck? And Why he would he short me, you? And he fuck, cause there's, there were people, there was a ton of them that were running game out here for a while. I thought everything was settled by a handshake. What's up, dog? That was a great set. Bro, you're making 2000 at the door. Yeah. You got to break something off for somebody here. You got to gas. Yeah, come on. A fucking nacho platter. Make an effort. I don't, all right, if you don't want to give me money, that's fine. But at least have a case of beer back here for the comics. Yeah, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. There's a club out here that I that doesn't pay features that I worked an entire weekend at. Check and up. at the end of the weekend, I was like, where's my uh, check? And they're like, oh, we don't pay features. People want stage time. And I was like, what the fuck? It was like six shows or something. Driving back and forth, Orange County. I was like, no. You know, I... I Took a look around for a while what was going on in the young scene for a while, in the young comic scene. I got to see. And I got to tell you something. I was really upset. Like, I went through some shit in New York. New York was rough when I was back there. You had to sell tickets and yeah. bring people. And I thank God I had friends that would come to the shows and stuff, you know, four yeah. friends. But it's abuse. It's borderline abuse. That's why I left New York, the comedy scene. And I ended up going to Colorado because all the comics had their own rooms with a budget. Mm. And they give you twenty bucks. Fuck, twenty bucks is better than anything. Yeah. And they give you ten minutes of stage time when you had eight minutes, you know. But I see how rough it is, you know, in these areas. This New York, in the bigger markets, you go to a smaller market. You don't. There's no four fucking bringing. Right. There's no five dollars for five fucking minutes. There's, no. There's none of that shit. You like know? San Diego, you can get up. I remember when I started, I would go down to San Diego sometimes because I could do like four shows in a night. Like you, there's so much That's stage kind of, time down there. San Diego yeah. used to be great. Yeah. There was a room down there that the Agostino called me a few weeks ago. It used to be called the Comedy Palace. It's still there. Oh yeah, I just did it with Sam Tripoli and Jim Florentine. The Comedy Palace. Yeah, we do just they, did it. Do they still? You know the old owner. The old guy that booked it yeah. made you stay outside with a bucket. No. And do what? I did it one weekend and I almost killed myself. Wait, what do you, with a bucket and collect money? What are you doing? No, we didn't. No, I've never done that. I've done that room a few times. It was the most times. embarrassing thing in the world. Oh, no. No. I've, and I I've was such that. a drug junkie that I needed the money. He called me up. He's like, you could probably make about six or seven hundred. We break it up amongst the comics. You're a name. You've been in the longest yard. I said, okay. At the end of the show, you have to stand outside with a bucket and shake everybody's hand. They put money in the bucket. Oh, God. Change and shit. You're single. like Salvation Army. It was <laughs> humiliation. No. 101. I don't even like to sell merch. Me I don't like to peddle. No, 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 no. Listen, I don't like none of that shit. I just I know. doing a show, talking to people afterward. If I could come out in between shows, sometimes both shows are sold out. Yeah. The club is like, listen, you can't come out in between shows. You'll yeah. cause too much of a fucking nightmare out there. So That's crazy. But I, it's always fucking great to see you. I, I love can't believe you. it was this long. I haven't seen you in like two weeks. I, I think it's been even long. I feel like I haven't really talked to you in like a month. We haven't been a podcast in a while. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I don't even think I've seen you really. And it's been a minute. I don't, You know, listen, I, the time I have now is I love doing comedy, but I like doing five spots when I'm in town for the week. So tonight, I'll get, if I could do, if I'm in, if I'm home for the week, I'll do five spots. I'll do yeah. two Thursday, two two Tuesday, and one Saturday early, nine fifteen, and I'm back over the, the thing tonight. I'll shoot down there early. Are you going to the store? Yeah, I got oh. a ten fifteen, and I'll yeah. jump on Sam Tripoli's. Comedy. And then uh, Thursday, I'm off to fucking Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach Improv. Ooh yeah. And then I'm two weeks from now. I'm going to Hilarious in Cleveland. Now you're doing the Cleveland Comedy Festival. Oh, I am at November seventeenth. But the weekend you're in Cleveland, the last weekend of October, I'm at the Comic Strip in Edmonton, like October twenty fourth to the twenty. Now what is the Cleveland Comedy Fest? November seventeenth. Where? Oh, uh, it's at Playhouse Square. It's like the theaters. I think my show's in like the Allen Theater. Who else is doing it with you? It's me and um, Rick Glassman. It's two of us, I think. Really? Yeah, I think he's from Ohio also. I think it's like a hometown no headline. No other comics? Show no something. other local comics? Well, I think there's other shows with other comics, but I think ours is just, uh, there's probably a host or something, but I think it's just the two of us on that one. It'll be fun. And then uh, 
and then I'm with you, and then I got a bunch of dates coming up. Yeah, that New York Comedy Festival will be fun. It's going to be so and fun. And then a lot of people show up. A lot of people from the other shows Oh yeah. come over and just hang out in the green room. Wait. Yeah, and then it's it'll be a lot of fun. It's You'll get to meet Timmy Holloway and fucking. I'm so excited to meet your the, friends. Yeah, I got a fucking email. Like I can't wait to see Kate. It's gonna be hard to focus. I want to fuck her so bad. <laughs> like from some random fucking email. Oh guy. god, so it'll be fine. Don't New worry. York is ready for fucking Kate Quigley. We're gonna have so much fun. Oh, November eighth from the tenth. I'm gonna take you to Rudy's. But oh. uh, eat some spaghetti. You don't like spaghetti. Yeah, I can. Well, I can't. Actually, I have to eat gluten free pasta. What about seafood? You like seafood? Yeah. Oh, this is the seafood joint. I want to go to Chan's Dragon Inn for some nice Chinese food. I like Chinese food. I'm going to turn you on to the best Cuban joint, Edgewater. And that's it, Ron. And then a slice of pizza from down the block from Gotham. I'm so excited. <gasps> it's going to be oh, so fun. And then fun. we're on a 545 right back to LA to get here at nine in the morning on Sunday morning. Nobody even knows you're gone. I love that. It doesn't even matter. Jet Blue. Like I love JetBlue. A motherfucker. It's the best. Oh, I wish I could only fly JetBlue. All oh, the time. I'm flying them again this this Thursday to Fort Lauderdale. Of course you are. I upgraded to mint like a doctor. I don't <laughs> give a fuck about Wednesday night. I know you're so lucky, man. JetBlue. That's like a whole bed. You get like a king size bed yeah, in the front. It's fucking tremendous. Yeah, it's that's the best. Yeah. Did you, no. see, did you see the fucking the menu I had last time? And I got upgraded. I paid like the extra one twenty. I bought a cheap seat and I got upgraded. You're so funny. Was that the one when Dice was on the flight with us? No. That oh. was that one that time I got upgraded too. You but, always get upgraded. You know me, dog. I know how to play these bitches. I mean, I can't wait. They can't deal with the fucking Cuban. Look at the menu on the way there. Tus Tuscan kale salad, crab avocado rolls, ricotta <laughs> dumplings, black garlic chicken, and pork adobo if you're a Filipino. And on the way back, we had Fresh fruit, acai yogurt parfait, grilled and chilled avocado, plum clafadis. I didn't have that. Clafadis looks like a fucking plum clit. I'm not eating that shit. <laughs> and they had I didn't have that. Potato risotto, but poached egg, ham, cheddar, amarillo, alioli, and poblano fucking feta cheese. Are you fucking, this is Jet Blue. On my flight, I got cheese. It's This is the first thing he showed me at the airport. Last night, I ate frozen chicken nuggets. I didn't even heat them up because I was lazy and hungry. What? How do you eat frozen chicken nuggets? They're not really that frozen. You can like suck on them. This is how I eat. I'm so lazy. I eat like cans of That's tuna disgusting. and frozen vegetables. I know. <laughs> I just don't care when I'm alone. I'm like... I eat like the way people put gas in a car. Like it's not about the food. No one it's puts just... frozen chicken nuggets in their car. Yeah, but I mean, you you sometimes put the cheap gas. You don't always put the premium. Yeah, but you can't even microwave them. Yeah, but I was really hungry and it was like three a.m. and I and I had done a spray of the weed stuff. Oh my god, Joey's friend Deborah hooked me up with this weed banaca thc spray that you spray in your mouth. Have you tried it yet, Lee? I have. I've tried other ones. I don't think I've tried that I'm one. I'm gonna tell you something. By the way, she's going to get this late. The ninth was Deborah Hubs's birthday. So I want to wish her a Aww. big time happy birthday. Happy birthday, Deborah. Thank you for the weed spray. She is a fucking the real deal. She's a great lady. She's awesome. She's great on the fucking church board. She was great at the thing. We saw her when we went to eat lunch. And she was already having a party. We were smoking pot outside me. Lee was watching the Steve Simone, and we saw her, and she already looked cuter than ever. She's so cool, man. She had a pint of blackberry brandy. <laughs> she goes, I'll see you later. We Facebooked back and forth, and then I didn't hear from her for a couple of hours. And then I went up to my room, and I looked on Facebook. I didn't see her afterward. I didn't see the girl afterward. She fucking Facebooked me. I, felt, I got so high, I fell asleep and passed out. <laughs> I didn't make it to your show. Well, that's how cool Deborah. Hunter. She's dope. She's she showed dope. up at my show in Connecticut at the casino, and she brought me this weed spray. And I'm telling you, it changed my life. Like I, she gave me a tube for you. It's just in my bag, and I forgot to take it out. It's I, been in there. She told me she mailed me one too. Like she's I have so a tube nice. Of that and I got six hits of acid for Lee oh, mixed into a battery. Shit. I let, I put them in with batteries in case TSA pulled me over. The little pieces of blotter acid, so it's got the acid from the battery sinking into it. No. Oh. We're gonna do them next week. I give him a buy. I call TSA. And He's got a buy anonymous week this tip. Week. That's insane. I've never done acid. I'm I got afraid. a. I got liquid acid too, and I took a little dot of it the other night before the Conor McGregor fight. No, you didn't. Yes, I did, and I gave some to. I gave the tube to the guy from Jiu Jitsu. 
You're crazy, Joey. I don't fuck around. I know. I'm scared of all that. That's why you're so fired up that night. Sure, I was fired up. My friends are like, let's do ayahuasca. Are you busy on October 15th? And I'm like, Where do they want you to do it at? I don't know. They all want to go out into some, like, into the woods or some shit. I'm like, who plans their drug use ahead? Like, I hate that shit. That's all I'm They're planning it. I'm not doing it. I'm, look, I'm boring. I mean, I'll do a little, you know, party every once in a while, drink a little. I'm, I'm not doing crazy drugs. I'm terrified. I'm already crazy, sober. I don't need to add in acid and mushrooms and ayahuasca. I don't even know when what I When I told the audience in Boston that I stopped doing edibles, they booed me. <laughs> you stopped eating edibles? Huh? When? But months I didn't know ago. that. Months ago. Because I threw Why? an edible up and they ate it, though. I took a half a bite of it. When in Rome, you got to get down. Like, I'm proud of you. you it, look- wasn't, it wasn't like an addiction thing. It was just, I know. I, I'm the type of guy I like to evolve. Sure. And I like to catch people off. The other night, I was walking out of the house with a backward sweatshirt on. And my wife looked at me and she goes, you know, by the way, I go, da, da, da. I like it like that. <laughs> I get a reaction from people. Yeah, I've sure. been doing that since 1981. I've seen you with it inside out before. And I it don't drives say people anything. crazy. Drives people crazy. I just never say anything. People cannot like handle that shit at all. So. That's so funny. Who cares? But to finish the conversation from earlier, that was the first time in my life I learned something. Like I took, like I was so frustrated with my love for that girl that I was like, "I'm done with this bitch." Like I'm walking away, and I fought it. I took acid every night and cried. I was in love with her, and I fought it. And when she put it on me, I was like, "No, nah, you're not gonna get it." And then that went. So that Tuesday I was supposed to meet her. And that Wednesday, I was supposed to meet her. Blew her off. Right. Then Thursday, she was like, I'm going out, but I'm not drinking. I'm hungover from the weekend. So I met her that night. She gave me my Coke back. And I walked into the car, and I go, how about dinner tomorrow night? And we went out to dinner. And then after dinner, we went to some fucking parking lot. We were swapping spit. And I just started eating her monkey. It was delicious. She had talcum powder on it. I ate it. And then after I finished, we didn't fuck or nothing. She, that's when she broke down. And she goes, all those nights you wouldn't call me would drive me fucking crazy when you wouldn't talk to me. And I learned the big part about women and men that you can't always be there. Once you pull away, it drives them crazy. Their insecurities come out. It is interesting because I have had a few guy friends over the years that I'm really close to. And at some point, I know they have feelings. And if I don't, and I let them know, yeah, sometimes they get butt hurt, like, or upset the way you kind of did, and they pull away. And it's hard, man, because it's like you care about the person, they're your friend, and you don't want to lose them. But it's also like it, and it is even weird when they start to date someone else and you see them giving that affection to someone else, even though you don't want it. You're like, oh, they're not there for me anymore. It's a weird thing, but. All those guys, eventually, I've become friends with again, but it's never the same when they come back. It's never the same level of friendship. Like, they're always a little more like... Well, like but it also teaches you a lesson. It teaches you a lesson about men that you can't... If you don't give them what they want, now they don't give you what you need. That's the problem that we've had here. That's the problem that we have. That yeah. Men do hold that against you. I've been guilty also when I was younger. Yeah. When I didn't know any better before the age of 30, when you're stupid and you're just finding out. You know, there was a time when, I don't know, I, I would just, like the story about the girl I dated and she told me she didn't have a mother and I just stopped talking to her. Right. I you know, like that. all that shit. Like, I think about that today. And I go, why did I do those things? You know, because you're young and stupid. You grow up. You know, last week when you came in, you had a conversation that was very interesting. Because from a female perspective, I have a daughter. And if you look at my roster of friends, I have I am heavy friends with women as much as I am with men. Like, yeah. I talk to maybe six women from Jersey on an occasional, every other day type. And we're brother and sister. We yeah. were, there's one girl that we did sleep together and we remained right. solid. Like yeah. I don't even think about that. It was just a mistake on our part. We were always better off friends. You know, the the thing with this guy last week, you know, that was going on. <clears throat> Listen, a lot of shit could have happened when you're in high school. You know, as long as I didn't put my dick in your ass and gang rape you or whatever. It, it, what, it, you know, I don't know if it was, I don't know much about politics. I don't know if it was a smokescreen by the Democrats or whatever the fuck right. it was. But 
I'm happy that it worked out how it did. Because you can't use my behavior against me when I was 18 against me. We can't have that happening. Yeah. We all make fucking mistakes when you're a kid that you don't know about. If you want to rape somebody, yeah, we need to know that. Yeah. But, you know, I read something, a story one time, 15 years ago. It had to be even longer because it influenced me turning myself in. I read about a guy that went on a date in 19 fucking 50 with some chick and something happened and they both got drunk and he bit her. Okay. In the neck like a vampire. Or something. Hard. And she almost died and he, he was wanted. Whoa. He was wanted for assault in 1952. Well, guess what? That guy stayed off the radar for 40 fucking years. Something crazy. I'm, the timing, I got arrested in 87. Yeah. So it had to happen. I read the story a year before I got in trouble. Damn. And he had gotten caught like in 86, but the crime was done like in 1948 or something. He had been off the grid. He had a wife, mm -hmm. wow. children. He was part of the fucking faculty at the school. He was this big timer. Yeah. But he got into a car accident. When they took him to the hospital, he did a background check. Then they fingerprinted him, and he was the guy wanted for biting this fucking woman in the neck when he was 17 years old. Holy shit. And it, it was, I don't remember what state it was in or whatever, but it was somewhere in the Midwest because it was very small-minded. Yeah. But the his attorney argued that, think about it, he did this, but then for 40 years, he never did anything else. So where there's smoke, there's fire, there was right. DNA testing, da 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 they couldn't figure it out. The point is, he didn't continue to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. we made a mistake when we were 17, 16, 18 at a party. You put your dick in some girl's mouth when she's sleeping. She's 14. She's passed out. You know, we've all fucking done shit. Regrettable shit. shit. We cannot live in a country where we. I'm responsible for what I do today, yesterday, and the day before. I can't be responsible for something I did when I was under 18 or 18. Then he went to Yale. What kind of people go to Yale? What kind of people go to Yale? Uh, fuck not. Smart people? Rich, smart. And uppity. Yeah. Guys who think they can fuck you when you pass out and, they yeah. and their dads are going to buy them off. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He didn't appear that way to me. Yeah, it's really weird. It's so weird. Like, I posted something about it, but it's super weird for me as a, a woman, especially, because I feel sometimes pressure, even from my girlfriends. You know, all my girlfriends are like, Kate, I don't like what you posted about saying you don't know who's right and you should automatically support the victims. And th the thing is, it's like, well, two things. I'm not saying that I think Kavanaugh is a good guy, obviously, but like... They asked him, have you ever been blackout drunk? He has to say no, because if he says I have been blackout drunk, then it's, you don't know what you did. But everyone has been blackout drunk. Anyone who drank in high school or college has been blackout drunk. And I know girls like people, sometimes victims wait to come forward. Like I have a family member who's like, I was victimized as a child and I'm just now coming forward. And there's here's the reasons. And it's like traumatizing. And you're like, holy fuck. This changes my whole view of all these people in my family. And it, I understand the reason to wait in some ways. But then at the same time, it's like there's there's also people that lie. There's women that lie. There's women that say they're pregnant sometimes when they're First not. First of all, there's listen, how many people could give you an accurate account of what happened 30 years ago? Well, accurate, yeah. Accurate. You know what? You know who gives you an accurate account? A victim that lived through it. A victim you remembers know, everything. There's something that sticks out in my mind. Yeah. That I think about once a week that I saw. I saw a woman get beat like a dog. I saw a woman get beat. I didn't see her get beat. I saw the result when she came to my house. And we, my mom had to wrap her up with a towel. And they had to put cigarettes. The husband was putting cigarettes out on her. I mean, it was just a fucking horror show. But you remember it. I remember because the details. every it's traumatizing. minute from that night. I yeah. could sit there with you. Go to a psychotherapist, somebody to hypnotize you, put the five people in that room and describe what I was feeling. You know, it was two nights after Christmas. Yeah. You know, there was this joy in the air. You could smell 
people burning wood in their fireplaces in Jersey. You know, I still remember all those smells. And right. I still remember, like, about just being up. Like, I had no school. Like, yeah. what were the chances of me being up at 2 in the morning? No, yeah, and having right. no school. And all of a sudden hearing, like, like people banging, like, are you let me help me, help me. And I'm, like, looking around. And all of a sudden my mother's, like, opening the door. She's putting a bathrobe on. And she's like, what the fuck was that? And I go, I don't know. Somebody's in the door. My, mother, my mother's like, step back. And my mother looked out the door. And she's like, Jesus Christ, get a knife. And it was this lady, like, hunched over, like, in a fetal position. And he, she kept saying, he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me. We had to fucking pick her up and drag her in. And she was half naked, like, she had a hot body. I remember being like a kid going, damn, look at those titties. But she had blood coming out of everywhere. Her face was smashed. And then one got up. My stepdad got up. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Jesus Christ, close the fucking door. And... As he was saying that, we could hear the husband walking up the block with something, a knife in his hand, saying, Don't let that puta. Where are you, fucking whore? I'm going to fucking finish you off. And I remember my dad looking at me, like looking at my mom and running upstairs and coming out with a gun and going, Don't move another fucking step. Thank and then God. We were thinking about calling the cops, but in my house, we didn't call the cops. So my mother just took the lady and bandaged her up, and I still remember, like, like wiping her and seeing oh. the rag full up with blood. And that stayed with me. Is that you remember? Like, I still want to cry. Like, I remember wiping her and crying, going, I hope this never happens to my mother. I hope this never happens to a woman. When they healed her up, my mom and dad had to put mercurochrome on all the cigarette burns. She must have had 10 cigarette burns on her fucking chest and her back. It was just brutal. So from that lesson on, I always learned that you're going to have misunderstandings with a woman, but you can't raise your hand to a woman. No. I learned that night. That night, I learned that lesson at the age of 12 or 13 or whatever I was. That, yeah. That's crazy. But that was the 70s and 60s. You know, you got to remember, OJ brought it to light in 85. Before then... I could smack you in the face. You could smack me with a lantern. The cops come. They might make me go to Lee's house for the night. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing is like lately since I've been trying to do like work on myself, I've been talking to my family and stuff and there's like stuff that I'm finding out that I don't remember though. Because sometimes you do block out trauma, you know? And then, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing is just, it's a really weird, we're living in a really scary time in a weird time where people can be penalized for things they did when they were in high school but then at the same time it's like that is horrific and the guy that did that to that woman like if he if 30 years later we find out he did that it's he was still a monster and he should be accountable so it's just but it's also like i've thought about that guy many a night what happened to them do you know she moved she Waited till the next day or something. And I think my mother went over there and got some of her clothes. And then when he was at work, she packed up and moved to the Bronx with her sister or cousin or something. And then he, I saw him for maybe another four months. And I had told everybody in my neighborhood what I had seen. Like, this guy is not a good guy at all. Yeah. He lived on the bottom of Giving on Terrace. He didn't, they didn't have any kids. You know, I would just see him out there working Thank on his God. stupid fucking cars all the time. And every time he seen me, he gave me a look. And he would look the way because he knew what he had done that I knew what he had done. And then he moved and I never saw him again. I never... I always thought about it. I always think about it, especially now that I have a daughter. I have friends, you know, even Ali Wong one night was on stage talking about that she hates going on the road because as a woman, you have to get in a strange car with a strange man who drives you, you don't own any of these people as a woman, you know, as a guy. So, I don't know. I don't even know how we got in this conversation. <laughs> I know, it's, it's I know. It's just us talking shit. No, I mean, it is. It's just, it's it's weird. I, I don't remember much from my childhood. I just hear shit. I hear stuff that I don't remember all the time, but the more I hear, the more it explains. Now, them. remember one thing. And today I went off on Lee, not went off on, we were having a conversation about working out. And I told him what I thought about psychiatry. Psychiatry is very helpful sometimes. 
Yeah. Psychiatry is very helpful. It's helpful to go to talk to somebody. There's one part of psychiatry I do not like, and that's the picking of the scab. If it's not bothering you, and it's not affecting your life. Why pick it open? Don't pick it open. I agree with that. You don't remember getting molested, but your cousin did, and your sister did, and the cat did. You know, then but, but leave it under the fucking statue. The thing with leaving it under there is unless like the reason you're doing xyz is because there's something in your subconscious that you don't but know but i don't want you to think it out and make it up oh yeah that's I what want i wonder th- i don't want you to think it up and now make up a scenario that's what i wonder i know a girl that i'm friends with not anymore that introduced me to her in like we're comics we're comics yeah. and one time i did a gig with her and her grandparents are there and she was fine, and the grandparent left her money. Yeah. And then one day on a drunk spoo, she went on a thing that Grandpa molested her. That she had just remembered Grandpa molested her. That's what I'm saying. People uh, remember stuff all of a sudden. I wonder that sometimes, too. How What if? How do you know it really happened? How do you know it's not a story? I'm not just talking about molestation. I'm just saying in general. Like, I hear about all kinds of violence that happened around my family, but I don't remember ever seeing violence. Do you know what I mean? Like... How do you know what's real? I've lied to myself before. If we don't know what's real and what's not, then leave that where it's supposed to be out of your mind. Yeah, I guess I'm going to tell you a fucked up story, and then we'll get the fuck out of here. My mother used to wake me up every night at 3 in the morning when she got home from the bar. Yeah. With Chinese food, a Cuban sandwich, a BLT, whatever. And she would wake me up, and I would fucking hate it. Some nights I liked it because the food was good. But for the most part, I hated it. I'd just fall asleep. Yeah. you fucking waking me up. The night she died, I heard her yelling for me. And I turned over. Mm-hmm. I was like, so for about a month, I kept saying, maybe she was yelling for me while she was having the heart attack and I could have saved her life. If I would have dug into that foxhole, I wouldn't be here with you guys right now. Yeah. I'd be somebody living in a, a home under medication beating myself up, being the victim that I didn't save my mother's life. I heard her yelling in the crib. You know, there's a movie called Paradise. It was on about three weeks ago and I taped it and I watched it and me and my wife cried. My wife had never watched it. It's a movie that Don Johnson and Melanie Griffin made Mm -hmm. right when they remarried in like 91. John Johnson was fucking beautiful and Melanie Griffin was a piece of ass jack. Melanie Griffin's built kind of weird, like a hip. She's got a flat ass and big hips. And hmm. But in this movie, she looked yeah, beautiful. She's cute. She's cute. And it's about a couple who, the kid from Harry Potter, not that fucking goofy kid with the glasses, but one of those kids shows up to their house. That uh, Don Johnson's wife has a college girlfriend, a sorority girlfriend. Yeah. And her and her husband are having problems. They have a kid. So she calls the Johnsons to see if she could drop the kid off for three weeks. And it's about this couple that had a baby and he died. And their relationship hasn't been the same. And now this kid teaches them how to be a couple again. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking beautiful. Don Johnson fucking hit it out of the fucking park with this movie. Yeah. I'm a big time Don Johnson (laughs) fan. And I remember telling them one time I did one of Adam Sandler's movies. Yeah. Nick Swanson's movie, the one that bombed really bad. It was me and Don Johnson in the closet for like an hour. And we would have to walk into the room together. <laughs> so in that hour in between takes, we were talking. Yeah. He was great. Everybody said he was a dick. He was great to me. Yeah. And when I said to him, I go, Brian, I'll tell you something. I think your best movie is Paradise. Hmm. And he thought about it for a minute. He goes, I think so too. Huh. If you ever see it. But the point, see it. the point of that thing is that at the end, she breaks down. And she says that she heard him cry. And she didn't turn over to pick him up. So she has to live with that the rest of her life. You know what? I want you to make a decision like I did. Like if that happened to you, you have to make a decision on what happened and move on. Because it was eating away at me. And I was starting to turn into one of those people. You ever do coke with people? That all of a sudden they tell you everything about their childhood, what went wrong, and you... You went from having a good time and yeah. wanting to suck the guy's dick You're like, oh. to now I don't want to suck your dick because yeah. you depressed me so much. <laughs> yeah. You know, you take, totally. girl, you take a girl home, you got down with a bikini, you're snorting coke, and all of a sudden she looks at you and she goes, Did I ever tell you my father raped me when I was nine? Oh, uh, yeah. Night is over. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to give you aspirin. I'm going to crush it up. You ain't doing no more coke. <laughs> yeah. 
that's what that becomes in your life. I think you're right. I know I'm right because it it's... had me for about a year. Yeah. It had me for about a year thinking of that. I could have saved her life. No, you couldn't. First of all, when God picks your number that night yeah. at midnight, God takes a list out of 20 names and he starts reading them out. And the lucky winner is Joey Diaz. You're right. It don't matter. There you go. You're right. You're crossing the street at the ha ha. Yeah. And there's a car with no lights That's coming it. down the street. And you just get hit by a guy. Nobody understands. When God wants you to go, it's, it's time, time to go. If he wanted me to save her, he would have fucking woke You're me right. up and made me save her. And also, it's just living in the present. In yeah. the moment. Not I don't the past, want, I don't, not in the future. If you got molested, I don't want you to come to me like this poor. This girl that I'm talking about, this killed her. Like yeah, she was no, fine I don't want to know. Until she came up one day and said, I think my grandfather molested me. You think now? I was just saying that. After you spent this money in Mexico. Yeah. Like now you remember that after you just bought a house and you spent this money in Mexico, now it occurred to you yeah. that the guy molested you while you were spending 20s and jumping up and down. Yeah, I don't want to know. You didn't think about a finger up your ass. I now all of a sudden, now you fingered your church. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a fucking wanna break. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. My, Give fr- me a fucking my friend break. just went to therapy and they like dug all this molestation. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you know, I think I'm okay. Not no, knowing. I don't need to. No. Me. You know what? I never hung on. If I got a finger in the ass, it belonged there. I don't remember it. I'm fine with it. And we're going to end on that note. Kate oh, Quigley, I love you. I love you so much. Where are your Thanks dates coming up? Uh, comic Strip Edmonton, October 24th to 28th. And then I'll be with you in New York at Gotham. And then uh, Cleveland Comedy Festival. November and don't 16. forget, you bad motherfuckers. I'll see you Friday, Saturday night, West Palm Beach Improv. We're dropping some knowledge. We got some home motherfuckers <laughs> coming over. Eddie Brancaccio's coming to the second show. We got Louis Castellino with Joey Caracapa. We got fucking Tasia Romano's husband's coming. We got a party. So you don't want to fucking miss. I'll see you motherfuckers at the West Palm Beach Improv. And I'll, uh, I'm, then I'm in Cleveland also. Yeah. Two weeks fucking later. All right. Thank you very much for spending time I love time you. I love, I love you. you. Have thank a great you. day. Yeah. I want to thank Kate Quigley again for coming in. Always a fucking fun time with her. But one thing before we wrap up. First off, sure, watching football is fun. But it's more entertaining when you got a little money on the game. All right. Guys, you heard me talk about this for weeks, and some of you are still sitting on the fucking sidelines, sitting there broke like a mama Luke. Whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting in my bookie. Why? I'll tell you why. I'm the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot. But like playing numbers on a roulette, you can create a big parlay. You could pick three teams to win, and if you hit all three of them, you could turn a yardstick, $100, into $600. There's so much to bet on. Playoff baseball, hockey, primetime fights, college football. They got everything. My bookies, one bet I know you'll be happy with all year. I recommend these guys because I trust them. They've been around for years, and they got great online reviews. Plus, their mobile site is easy to use. So if you're on the sidelines and you don't have time to mess around, Christmas is around the corner. You want to make some money? You want to make a little bacala? My bookie is the way to go. Log into my bookie right now, today. And double your Gitas. You're like, Joey, what's Gitas? Money, you fuck. M-O-N-E-Y. Money. Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, and you'll get your first deposit matched 100%. That means you put a nickel in, you get 100%. 500 in, you got a 1,000 fucking bucks to get your party started. So use promo code CHURCH. Go to my bookie. You play, you win, you get fucking paid. That's it, and that's that. I also want to introduce Quip to the show. Quip is one of the most important things we do for our health every day, is brushing your teeth. I hope you brush your teeth, you filthy animals. Yet most of you don't do it properly. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and enjoyable. Let me explain something to you. It's got sensitive sonic vibrations, gentle enough on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. A a built-in, ready for this one? A two-minute timer pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, helping you guide a full and even clean. Up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't even... Listen, I brush for like 10 minutes, and my teeth are still green. I brush my teeth in the shower twice, three times a day. I just keep brushing. That's why I'm going to use Quip. It declutters your sink or cabinet and makes traveling with an electric toothbrush a lot easier. Quip doesn't require a clunky charge. It runs for three months on one charge. 
Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. That's why three out of four of us, bristles that are old, worn out, and ineffective, Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association as a, and has thousands of verified five-star reviews. That's exactly what you want. You don't know what brushing your teeth is like until you use a Quip. Now, do me a favor. This is why I love Quip. Because they, they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. The Quip, it starts at $25. If you go to getquip.com slash Joey right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free. Gratis. That's it. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash Joey. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P. Again, Quip is the best electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers out there. Go to Quip right now. Getquip.com slash Joey and get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. All right. I want to thank Quip. I want to thank my bookie. I want to thank Onnit.com. But most importantly, I want to thank you motherfucking savages because I love you. Without you, I'd have fucking dick. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the church family. Again, a shout out to Kay Quigley and my main man, the motherfucking flying Jew. I love you motherfucker. See you Tuesday morning. Bright and early. The rest of you is I'll see you in West Palm Beach Friday fucking night. Ready to smoke reef or eat gorilla biscuits. Whatever the fuck you want to do. Let's do this shit. Kick this fucking Lee Mule. Kick this Mule Lee. I'm getting dyslexic in my old age.